Ladies and gentle cars, welcome to the DTM Esports 2022. My name is Luke Crane, aka Actual Vision. I'm joined by Connery Maddock. Connery, how are you feeling today, buddy? Are you excited for this one? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't help but be excited when it comes to DTM Esports. These races do tend to deliver, and hopefully we'll get to see it again uh, here at the Lausitz Ring this time around. Another circuit in Germany. After all, it is a German series, so that's not entirely surprising. Uh, but uh, certainly one that uh, is unique in many ways. Yeah, it's been really interesting over the last couple of weeks, or the last month, should I say. We've had the qualifying phase, and then we've had rounds one, two, three, and four uh, happen previously. Last time out, we were at the Norris Ring, and it's been the Kevin Siggy show. A couple of mistakes here on there, but uh, out of everybody, he's been super, super consistent from you know start to finish, really, of this competition. Are you expecting a little bit of the same here, or maybe a couple of surprises? Well, we, we are getting to that point in the season now. We're getting towards the, the halfway stage of things, so I, I would have thought the as close as competitors will really try and start uh, stepping up to the plate at this point in the season. They might have realized that maybe the first two rounds didn't uh, exactly go their way. Full on effort coming into these middle rounds of the season to try and set themselves up for a championship run at the very end. Like you said though, Siggy has been uh, well, not quite perfect, but pretty much uh, over the course uh, of this season so far. He'll be a very, very difficult driver uh, to beat. Looking at practice times in the session right now, Moritz Lohner, Florian in Hassa, both up there in practice times at the moment. So let's see if that carries on over into qualifying. But for now, you'd be uh, you'd be pretty confident putting uh, uh, putting your guess on uh, on C. Yeah, 100%. Well, again, we've just spoken about some of the rounds we've already had and where we are at today in the Lousers ring. But let's check out the calendar of the full season. As you can see here, we've already been to Imola. We've already been to the Norris ring. Now we head to the Lousers ring. It's the turn one oval as well. So mm -hmm. it, from the final corner down towards turn number two, it is flat out with a little bit of a let off through the gas of turn number one. But it is fast. It is frantic. It's going to be super exciting. Two races for you today. We've got a 15 minute sprint race and then a full one hour uh, feature race, which will indeed include a mandatory pit stop uh, we head to spa frank or champ uh, on the 10th of April, which is this coming Sunday. Uh, we've then got Red Bull Ring on the 21st of April, and then we head to Portimao for round six on the 28th of April. Let's check out today's format then as well, so you guys know exactly what to be expecting for the rest of the today. Free practice has already begun. Stream start. We know the stream started. You can hear us. If you don't know that, then, well, my bad. Um, qualifying is 10 minutes long for the first race, and then we do have that sprint race, which is 15 minutes. It will be a rolling start. No mandatory pit stop to deal with in that race it is just about getting to the checkered flag as fast as you possibly can um, and then we've got qualifying two which is 10 minutes long as well and then an endurance race which is 60 minutes in itself as well but the pit window will open after 15 minutes and the pit window will close with 15 minutes to go so every driver has to come in and change their tires at a minimum so yeah, super, super exciting. We were just speaking about it, it being the Kevin Siggy show, but let's check out the standings of said championship then. And well, it is Kevin Siggy, right? But there are two prizes effectively on offer here. You want to become the DTM Esports champion 2022. Of course, Moritz Lerner being the current champion, but not only is there that prize, the top five will go to a sighting event this year on the DTM calendar, and they will be judged and who will be the best candidate to win the prize, which is a fully paid season in the DTM Trophy 2023. That's, that excites me. For one reason, I commentate on the series. So I'm going to get to commentate on one of these drivers in real life next year, which is absolutely exceptional. Uh, but yeah, as much as Kevin Siggy has been very much the driver to beat, Ottaviani and Fiducci getting amongst the business, getting their business done very quietly, really. Uh, and they currently find themselves in P2 and P3. Three huge esports teams named there of Team Redline, RHG Esports, and Team Fordilla. Uh, we've then got another RHG driver of Christopher Hugvelt, uh, who's currently in P4. Actually, a race winner last time out as well because of a mistake from Kevin Siggy. Moritz Lerner then had a terrible week last week and needs to bounce back here uh, at the Lousitz Ring. Has the added extra of actually driving around this circuit for real. So hopefully that will help him and put him in good stead here. But he's only got a seven point buffer from his two teammates. So Florian Hasser currently on 83 points for Dury. Esports. And then we've got Leonard Kripner, who's on 65, a little bit further back. Um, and those two drivers specifically really do need to, to get a bit of a, a, a I don't know, a, a, a jump in performance. They need to get a big result today to start putting that pressure on that top five. Uh, otherwise, it could very quickly become the top five. After today, if, if for instance, the, the, the current top five, if they just stick around in those positions and they get really good results, it could almost become very difficult for anyone to overturn that deficit. So how important is today? Midway point, Connery? 
you have to get something done here if you're not really quite in that top five. Yeah, th th this will be make it or break it with regards to any challenges for Siggy uh, coming into the back end of the season because you, you just simply can't let a driver of his caliber get away at the front of the field by uh, over 50 points. Uh, at, at this stage and you know, if that extends coming into the next round of the season I think f for most of the drivers you, you could pretty much say goodbye to the championship because unless there's a huge uh, issue with Siggy you know he, he has a pretty terrible weekend finishes outside the points for, for both the races you're not really going to get yourself uh, in a position where you going to be able to go for that championship and of course he's, like you said you need to finish in the top couple of positions to even get that chance of then have the having the chance of qualifying into the uh, and getting the real life drive. However, winning the championship that's got to be a, a huge uh, boost to your chances of actually getting that prize in the end, right? Yeah, one hundred. You, you'd like to think so, right? Yeah. <laughs> Surely that's you know the first, that's the first thing you have got to do to to even give yourself an opportunity. Um, well, talking to superstars, Kevin Siggy is an absolute superstar of this championship. If you head to the DTM website right now, there is an in-depth interview with Siggy as well. Um, and yeah, it is very a very very cool read. The the guy knows what he's doing when it comes to sim racing, and actually has driven a real car as well uh, in, in racing terms. Um, anyway, talking of more sim racing superstars we've got a track guide here from marcel kiefer a red bull racing esports driver uh he actually did commentate the media marked uh wildcard event earlier on this season for the dtm esports but now he's back to where he really should belong because he's not really commentating anymore don't take my job uh <laughs> behind the wheel and he's going around the lousy ring for us All right, and here we go. Coming out of the final corner, opening the steering wheel flat out. My name is Marcel Kiefer. Welcome to a hot lap and track guide around the Lausitz ring, where the competitors will fight tonight in the DTM esports competition for the victory and approaching turn one, lifting a bit, keeping it in sixth gear and flat out again, getting close to the wall on the exit. Don't touch it. But use all the track and now we're looking into the best overtaking opportunity. The first braking zone breaking at the 150 meter board. Heavy braking down to third gear. Getting close to the curb. Now for the right and the second gear. And now a late apex, early apex. Leading into a late second apex. With early on the power using all the track on the exit. To carry as much momentum as we can. For the next corner, we are looking at the 50 meter board, sending it in, letting the car roll a bit, aiming for another late apex. Early on the power to use all the track on the exit, all that astroturf is fully valid within the track limits. Now heavy braking at the grass, down to second gear, and also rotate the car on the throttle, flat out for the right hander, leading into a hairpin, chicane, a right-hander in second gear, then the left-hander, also in second, and now preparing for the exit, delaying the throttle, and now full throttle until the end, staying close at the inside of the pit wall to complete your flying lap around the lawsuit ring. I'm excited what's gonna happen tonight, I hope you are too, let's go racing. Marcel, 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 what a guy. Uh, believe it or not, he's got quite a deep voice, but as soon as he gets behind the wheel, it's like he's taken loads of helium on board. Uh, well, that is not ideal what we're seeing on screen. Now, that is a Team Fordzilla car in the wall. Uh, so yeah, not a good start as we've got, what, 16 seconds left of practice. So it doesn't matter. We're not quite in qualifying as of yet, but yes, we have got indeed 10 minutes left of qualification before we head, or oh, sorry, yeah, 10 minutes of qualification coming up for you before we head into our 15 minute timed race. Are we gonna see the Ferraris dominate once again today? Connery, or do you feel like there's going to be a difference uh, of the guard or a change of the guard? I genuinely, because of the BMW straight line speed, I feel like that's going to be the stronger car. Uh, so if you can get a move done in the first sector, lap one, you're in a good spot. But that final sector is very, very tight and twisty. Yeah, it's uh, last string is really a, a circuit of two halves in a way. Well, not exactly two halves in terms of the actual <laughs> layout, but of course the uh, um, you, you want that you want that straight line speed for the, the multitude of. Meat 
medium length straights that we have. But then again, we have some quite slow complexes where the mechanical grip uh, of the Ferrari is going to be uh, a little bit more beneficial. But we've got to start qualifying here as those cars swarm their way out of pit lane and uh, do their whole uh, sort of no after you, no after you, no after you situation to try and find themselves a bit of space to get their laps in. Yeah, well, it's uh, yeah, they need to figure it out pretty quickly because ultimately, if you're too close to another driver, you're just going to slow each other down. Um, but the the driver that is leading the championship is leading the whole field. He's actually got Manu Rodriguez, who's yet to score a point so far this season. Is Manu? Uh, he's currently there, just in behind me. That Porsche, the sole Porsche on the grid. Good to see the Porsche do well today. Uh, Manu Rodriguez is actually currently um, sec second in the Alpine Esports time trial leaderboard. Uh, so he is absolutely uh, up there on, on multiple different titles. But on race room today is where he needs to be on it. And he is staying as close to Siggy as possible because he knows if he could put a time similar to Siggy, he's going to be right in and amongst it, right at the top end. Uh, and that is where you're going to score the points, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that's the task of me into this one, that's for sure. But uh, for Siggy, uh, he certainly was pretty eager to get himself out there. Um, well, head of the train, uh, like you said, so no one to interfere with his lap time in terms of getting blocked. But it does mean that he does not have any slipstream, especially coming uh, through this final corner and uh, down that straight towards turn number one. Of course, slouset string, pretty unique, considering that, uh, well, it, it's got an oval, hasn't it? And that's pretty rare as far as uh, European racing is concerned. Of course, we're not using the oval here today or rather we are technically using uh what is technically two corners of it uh stretch as oh someone's had a big oh dear around. yeah man who's tried to go flat out through turn number one there and you just can't you just cannot you've got to let off ever so slightly just to bury the nose into the apex there and siggy now will be thinking that's good i'm not dragging anyone along with me now i am good to go um right to all of you out there who would potentially like to race the dtm 2021 cars and you might not already have it if you head to twitter right now and just tweet out at dtm and at race room um your favorite ever dtm driver or maybe favorite ever car send us an image it could be anything favorite sim racer who knows? But you need to use the hashtag we love DTM. Uh, I'm going to be giving away three codes for the DTM 2021 pack, courtesy of Race Room. So yeah, Race Room have just handed me three codes to give away. So yeah, all you need to do is you make sure that you use the hashtag we love DTM. Send a picture of your favorite ever DTM car. Maybe your favorite driver. I don't know. It could be anything. It could be your favorite tree you've ever seen at a race circuit during DTM. I'm not that worried about it. But use the hashtag we love DTM, and I'll be picking three winners uh, during the broadcast. At, you know, it could be any time. Let's say we'll do one at the end of race one, uh, and then we'll do one just before race two, and then one at the end of race two. Uh, so there you go. If you want to win yourself that hashtag, we love DTM. Nice. There we go. Right. So, Siggy puts the first lap time in straight into the pits here. Uh, I, that says to me that the tyres go off very, very quickly uh, as Pring has, has just gone into, uh, well, went into momentarily second spot. And it's just so close up there. Moritz <laughs> Lerner is now second. Hassa is up to first position. Siggy only down in fourth. I had a little bit of an inkling that the BMW might put on a bit of a show today. And uh, as it stands, it absolutely is. Yeah, it's, it seems to be the case. Top three spots occupied all by uh, BMWs, then followed by the two Ferraris down to P5. Here's Marco Payet heading his way across the line now to set his provisional uh, banker time, shall we say. P18 for the moment in the uh, AMG Mercedes. And, uh, well, first flurry of time successfully through. Those that did not set times, Christopher Hergfeldt, uh, certainly one of the more notable uh, amongst all the drivers that weren't able to get their first effort in. Of course, it's, uh, I would argue, um, honestly, get your first lap time on the board no matter what it is, because then you have something to build off of for the rest of the, seven, uh, the session, and you don't have to panic about um, uh, potentially for starting at the very back of the starting grid for the sprint race. But uh, 22 drivers on the board, 27 total uh, out there continuing to circulate. Uh, there's Jack Heathley, uh, currently P7 uh, at the moment. And, uh, well, again, it's going to be a bit of a struggle um, because we haven't seen the AMG Mercedes really come to the forefront at any point over this season. However, like you said, potentially they might have something to say here at the Lousen String. Yeah, 100%. I want to give a big shout out here to uh, Pinches. Now, Siggy would have at least be expecting to be the top dog Ferrari, right? Mm. And he isn't right now. Adam Pinches, the Hungarian, there's always a Hungarian. Remember that. That's a fact. When it comes to race room competition, actually, just in the world of sim racing now, when there's a final, there's always a Hungarian. And we've uh, got ourselves our very own here at the top. Otto Viani, currently in the top five of the championship, is currently sixth. 
on the grid. We'll be expecting a little bit more, but I just feel like the grid's going to be a little bit different to what we've seen. Keith Lee up to P9. Well, he just dropped down into P9. As Fiducci now also in the top three in the championship is up to P6. So still three BMWs at the front there uh, as it stands then. And Lerner, who is our current champion, remember, our reigning champion, uh, he is currently second on the grid and needs a big day today if he wants to close that because he won't be worried about the top five. Mm. He currently races in the DTM. Uh, it'd be nice. For, uh, he currently races in the DTM trophy. It'll be nice for him to get another opportunity, right? But on the flip side, like he's not that worried about that. He just wants to become a two-time DTM esports champion, uh, as we see the beautiful Arnage competition liveries there, both of them working together. And that's something we've not seen really that much this season so far. Is teams working together and qualifying? We are absolutely seeing that today. Yeah, um, and if you're part of one of these big compliments uh, shall we say like door esports for example you got basically four of their cars in the same shot there uh, albeit split by uh, a bit of an imposter um, but uh, that gets well out of the way actually so there we go so we've got the four these door esports cars on screen they're gonna all work together in their slipstream train usually it's the car at the front front of the train that uh, basically sacrifices their lap time for the benefit of those cars behind Kevin Siggy just across the line now he goes up into p3 and uh, disrupts the BMW BMW domination to the front. Yeah, beautiful there from him. Um, you see Manu Rodriguez is on another lap time here. He's currently P24. And actually, uh, yeah, no, he's sitting behind this uh, train of uh, eSports cars. <laughs> there he is, look, in that Porsche. And he's just going to back it into the pits there. Maybe he doesn't feel like that car's quite got the pace um, to, to remix it at the sharp end as we're on board here now with Ralph Pringer. Uh, currently in 19th position, you can see there's a sea of German flags here, as you would expect with the DTMs, DTM Esports. So we've got the Media Marks BMW there just in behind. It's one of our wildcard drivers. We've got three wildcard drivers. All of them will be in the Media Marks cars. That's Alex Mose in there. Uh, Moritz Lerner, who is in second position in this train of cars. Who's at the front end here of this uh, cars? Florian Hassan. So he's already got that bank of time in. And I'm wondering if perhaps here it was used like it was Hassan that used Lerner the first time round, and now they're sort of flipping it. He's already got his uh, maximum time in. But as it stands, they are doing the perfect team job out here. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty uh, pretty put, well put together uh, for Dura Esports here. You can see uh, Leonard Krippner, he's uh, third in line in that train. He went faster through Sector 1. Not uh, not a very good Sector 2 at all. Four tenths of a second off the pace. So that was uh, uh, that was a little bit of an awkward one uh, for Krippner there. And uh, we've also got, uh, who's that there? Michael Rushall. I was wondering who the fourth Dora Esports car was. And it's uh, Michael Rushall down in P number 9 that currently has uh, two personal best sectors on this lap. He's going to gain the uh, the most benefit out of all this slipstream situation, uh, being at the very back of the pack. Uh, maybe a little bit of a reshuffle uh, to try and reorganize themselves for the very end of the session here. So Rachel heading his way across the line. Let's see how high he can climb up the uh, starting order. He still P9. So <laughs> again, not an ideal lap for him. But uh, just having a look, see where... Let's see. Let's see where Siggy is. Well, personal best sector one still, though. Almost two tenths of a second off of uh, Florian Hass's provisional pole sitting time at the moment. That's how much the draft helps you here, especially down in towards uh, turn number one as we as we do take that first oval turn. So you don't even have to lift. No, but I think that they've all reached their maximum here. I don't yeah. think it's possible to improve at this stage of qualifying. So Siggy here, I think, is, is maximum third as it stands. Hugvelt's already into the pits. Pinches then is in sixth position. We've then got Otto Viani. It's only going to be P8 for Otto Viani uh, as it stands. I will just quickly mention the championship order. Siggy leads the way uh, currently by 53 points. A huge advantage to Otto Viani. Otto Viani only P8. Viducci then is currently down in P7. And then now they've just been shifted down one position each. So Vellucci 8th and Ottaviani 9th because Jack Heathley has just got put up into a top 5 in the AMG. Three different manufacturers here fighting at the front end, which is good to see. Uh, Christopher Hugvelt, who is a race winner, he's currently 6th position, so not the, not the worst thing here in the world. Moritz Lerner currently uh, is in 2nd spot and we are just about getting the results here. They are going to come across the line, so mm. just not, I'm not going to read out the results as it stands until this group of 3 here crosses the line. Um, and then we will see exactly as to whether that changes here. But as it stands, it is Florian Hasser. Klip Krippner's moved up into P3. He pushes Siggy down into P4. Uh, we've then got Max Pfeiffer, who's moved up into P7. Hugvelt's dropped down to P8. Uh, Rachel has moved up into P6. So the starting grid is going to be Florian Hasser 
on pole. Moritz Lerner in second. Leonard Krippner is going to be in third position. Kevin Siggy in fourth spot. Jack Keithley is in fifth. Gianmarco Fiducci in sixth position. We've then got Michael Raschel in seventh spot. Uh, Max Pfeiffer is in eighth position. Christopher Hugfelt is in ninth position. And then Adam Pinches, like I say, is there is always a Hungarian. Uh, in 11th spot, then is Alessandro Ottaviani. Uh, Petr Pliska is in 12th spot. Alexander Dorniden is in 13th. And then we just about saw Isaac Price there, uh, probably sporting his beautiful leather jacket. Well, there we go, um, Connery. A few surprises there, to be honest. I know the uh, eSports are expected to be up the sharp end. But they worked together and it was very effective. Yeah, that, that worked out really, really well, didn't it, for Dury Sports? I mean, there is strength in numbers uh, when a qualifying session is like that at a circuit where the, where the draft is so prevalent, but uh, to be able to convert that uh, to a, well, P1 through 3 on the starting grid, that's that's great work there from Dury Sports. And, well, you, you got to take every single advantage that you can get. It's not forbidden in the rules that you can't slingshot with your teammates. So, um, you know, <laughs> you gotta, you got to take it. And uh, the they indeed have uh, grasped it with both hands. So uh, Siggy, though, still, even though he has basically no friends out there, um, Billy No Mates, probably, um, it's, uh, he was still able to put in a good enough time in clear air, no draft, to start P4. <laughs> that is that is pretty, pretty incredible, honestly. Yeah, very much it's so. Uh, right, again, if you guys would like to win yourself the DTM 2021 pack on Race Room, head over to Twitter, use the hashtag WeLoveDTM, and just tweet your favorite driver, a picture of your favorite driver, your favorite sim racer, I don't know, your favorite car ever in DTM. Uh, it could be your favorite ever gravel trap. Again, doesn't <laughs> matter. Just use the hashtag WeLoveDTM. Right now, Shane jo uh, Johnson Dag is used a moment that I commentated on, and that you can't, that's cheating. It's cheating that you've done that. Uh, but yeah, he's got involved there. We've got Don Viper as well as Celine, uh, who have all got involved so far. So get yourselves on Twitter, hashtag we love DTM. We're going to be back for race number one after this very short commercial break. It is a sprint race. It is round three of the DTM Esports 2022. Kevin Siggy in that red car on the right side does take us away here. And it's a great start for the Ferrari driver. He's got to defend that inside line, though. And just make sure he's in the lead going up towards the first chicane. Two RHG cars and trying to go around the outside of the Fordzilla. There's an Arnage car. That's Pinches, isn't it? The number 97 trying to make a move, trying to pinch a move up the inside. Car may have a little bit, but on a race room, it's not the strongest of things. Uh, Fiducci then has that inside line, which means he should hold on to the position. Runs out a little bit too far wide ahead of you. Oh, so, Siggy. Uh, it always, oh, Siggy's binned it. That's got to be on his own here. He was three seconds in the lead, and he has made a huge mistake here then. So the lead now goes to Hookvelt. His chances with five minutes remaining of this race to go out there and win it. As he makes a lunge up the inside then of Pinches. Pinches, it wasn't a case of... Yeah, he just ran wide there. He made a mistake, which is giving Siggy the podium position. Sit of that final hairpin. We've got a great look here at Kevin Siggy. Siggy's surely going to make a dive. He does. He makes it side by side here. And is he going to run out too far off the apex? Well, there's contact then between Ot Ottaviani and Fiducci. Siggy does get up to P2. He was not involved in that incident whatsoever. He set up perfectly well, but the day belongs to Hookvelt. The Swede takes the victory here for RAG. It's Siggy that takes the second spot, and that is damage limitation considering he was leading by three seconds. Kevin Siggy for Team Redline takes us away here at the Norris Ring. One hour's worth of racing, one pit stop they have to serve, and we are green light racing, baby. And it's another fantastic start here then from Siggy as we head up towards turn number one. Expected to be a bit of a car park in towards turn number one. Some late dives potentially up the inside. Yes, there absolutely was. I think that was Najee. As uh, the, the dives get sent in from behind, Jack Keithley, no! Oh, Jack Keithley gets tagged from behind. Delivery to look at, that's for sure. Um, and there's Wana, he's gone for a fake maneuver around the outside and then opens something up up the inside, hits the apex nicely. Oh, it initially hit the apex nicely. Pit straight due to the uh, suboptimal line coming off the corner, and oh, Bode just gets out of the way because here comes Moritz Lohner. Is this three positions in one corner? Well, he's almost got two, but that was a he massive lunge. 50 50, they'll want to come down here pretty soon. But we are expecting to see a lot. Of, oh, no. What's happened? A little bit of a tangle there. At least we see some frantic action. Look at this. <laughs> Crazy stuff going down here. As Rush was going to miss the apex run wide. And I tell you what, Hookvelt saying thank you very much. And now he causes the contact there with Yarshul, which is the category in use here in the GTM. 
uh, in, the GT in the DTM, not the GTM, what I'm talking about. Oh, oh. Marshall's gone around. Oh, on his own. For the R8 G driver of Otto Viani. He's trying to find the inside line. It's Fenucci. He has found that inside line. Can he hit the apex? He can't. That is, well. Wow. Yeah, I don't think you. Uh, I don't think you need to be a motorsport specialist to realise that wasn't very good. You're forced to go around the outside every single time. This is the closest he's been. He's finally got the overlap here as well with the nose in front. And can he keep this overlap on the exit? He can on the power nicely. Gasner almost sends him into the wall there. He is. Uh, I think this will again be a featured battle for the end. As there's another attempt from Lona. Not got the overlap this time, but he goes for the surprise move down the inside at turn number one. Has he overcommitted to the exit of the corner though? Someone who doesn't care about that is Kevin Singy. The team redline driver crosses the line, takes his second win of the season and undoubtedly will be the leader of the championship heading into races five and six. Here we go then, 16 seconds remain before we head into race number one. Sprint race, 15 minutes long. They do have one full formation lap to go through. And then it is all about who crosses the line first. It's as simple as that. And then the second race, it will be 10 minutes qualifying once again. And then it will be a full one hour feature race with a 30 minute pit window opening at 15 minutes and closing at 45. Right, here we go, Connery. Time for your predictions then. I know I always throw you under the bus here, but you know, I'm going to predict it's going to be one of the team de, uh esports drivers that wins this race. But yeah, I'm going to leave it to you to give our official prediction. But that is yeah, that is the easiest prediction to make that we'll, we'll yep. probably ever make um, because that the esports wall is going to be so hard to break down for anyone, even Siggy. You know, even someone as skilled as Siggy. That that's uh, and the BMW 17 times the size of the uh, other cars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it having all the grunt in the world in the straight line as well. So it, it's. It's going to be tough. Not impossible. Nothing's really impossible by any means, um, apart from me driving in the real world on a racetrack. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but the uh, I, I, I find it on anyone. I find it very hard <laughs> to see uh, a non door esports uh, car uh, win the sprint race. Um, of course, we, we have a, a little bit more complexity to things once we get into the one hour long in endurance quote unquote race where we have that pit stop strategy. But as far as the sprint race goes, yeah, I mean, something catastrophic needs to happen at the very front for, for a Dory Sports car to win this one. Well, I just want to make sure, I just want to see Moritz Lerner get around both races without crashing into anything, because I think I might be getting in a car with him at the <laughs> Lousers Ring um, so, in, in real life. So I just want to know that he can go around this circuit without, you know, hitting anything. So we'll see how it goes down. Uh, you can see he's on the left-hand side of your screen. He's got the number one on his car because he is the uh, DTM Esports current champion. Siggy, championship leader, is in that red and black Ferrari. He is obviously the team red line driver here. <coughs> then you've got him behind him, a Williams Esports driver, Jack. Keithley. Keithley is the vice champion. He came second last time out in the DTM Esports, so expect to see him in the monks. It's the first time, in all fairness, he's qualified pretty well here. So, yeah, expect a really good result from him. And then you've got the first of our team for Zilla cars. Uh, we have got a couple of uh, R8G cars there. We see some of the pink of Arnage as well. Uh, so, yeah, we have absolutely got, well, you we can also see tailored rig esports as well. There's lots of um, esports teams here represented, but you can see that wall of uh, esports. That BMW is huge. There's three of them. Good luck, Siggy. But if anyone could do it, it's Kevin Siggy, right? I mean, yeah, um, uh, at least as far as this, uh, the, 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 the roster looks like, uh, as far as this race goes with the, with the entries that we have. Um, I mean, if we, we can pluck other names from other parts of sim racing, potentially, but uh, yeah, Siggy in this one uh, would be the, your, your go-to uh, if you're going to pick anyone else other than a Dory Sports car to win this race. Uh, I mean, Jack Keithley could be a bit of a dark horse there in P5 in the Mercedes. We haven't seen how the Mercedes is in race trim um, here. I mean, we, we haven't seen any of the manufacturers in the race trim here today, but this is one of the first times in this series that the Mercedes has been somewhat competitive. So it, it'd be interesting to see what uh, see, uh, what Keith is able to do from that fifth place, but whether or not he'll be able to disrupt anything at the front eh, still remains to be seen.
Well, luckily, we're about to see it. Um, shout out to Leon. Leon has just tweeted saying, after seeing the BMW M4 GT3 at the Hockenheim ring yesterday uh, with the DTM testing, uh, we've also got uh, Twan Vollebrecht, who has tweeted a, an unbelievable Audi RS5. That car is beautiful. I think it's from around about 2010 to 2012. Uh, we'll go around the final corner here. We've got Ravi, who's also tweeted a Mercedes from a very similar era. And then we've got Fabi, who's tweeted, my favorite car is this beauty. It's the Ferrari, the number 30 that we do indeed have in DTM or had last season, which was Liam Lawson, but he's actually supporting Michael Rashall, who is in this race. It is DTM Esports 2022. It is round number five. We're here at the Lousy Ring. It's 15 minutes sprint race time. It's Dur Esports locking out the front here, and we are green light racing. It's a phenomenal start then from all three of the BMWs at the front. But look at Siggy. Siggy is trying to go around the outside, and actually, it looks like he might have the overlap. Oh, he's done it. He's absolutely done it here. He's going to swing it in, and he is going to break up the Dur Esports party at the front of this grid. The long run then is there's someone spinning off in the background. There's smoke all over the show here. As we got the long run down in towards turn number two, you've got to make sure you hit your braking mark here, otherwise, you will absolutely clean out multiple cars it's like a game of bowling down there if you get it wrong but i tell you what the dirty esports three the trio they're absolutely holding firm here to try and keep that top three but seth kevin singing there just eking a potential move there not quite gonna work out for the bmw although the bmw still got that overlap on the inside leonard Krippner still not quite able to keep hold of this p3 and i think you'll find here it will be a sweep across the bonnet there it is a sweep across the bonnet kevin singy gains one position at the start of this race Fiducci up to p5 by the way already overturned the deficit what keithley had uh rachel's dropped down to p7 hookfelt in p8 pinches ottaviani is now p10 uh it says moves being made left right and center in the background here but ultimately hassa and indeed learner they've got away beautifully well here very clean start from the front guys this is not so clean in the background it's absolute carnage here connery oh they're all leaning on each so the Max Pfeiffer pretty much in the middle of all of that going on back there. I'm not entirely sure how everyone's kept pointing in the right direction. Of course, we did have uh, some drivers that failed to do that in the opening few corners of this race. Uh, Attilia Dinya towards the back of the order. We also have Leon Rudinger already a DNF. Uh, in this event, but uh, you can see this battle now for P14 between Max Pfeiffer and uh, Luciano Vitvo as they uh, swap positions. So uh, Pfeiffer Vitvo uh, in that order for P14. Let's have a look back towards the front though, because you know this big slip streaming zone all the way from the exit of the final corner, basically in towards turn number two. You're you're on the throttle for a very very long time, uh, coming uh, down through uh, the straight and of course turn number one as well. Look at this. Titanic fight behind Jack Keithley. Yeah, Hookvelt just sweeps across there, Rachel, by the looks of things, and gets P7. That AMG struggles in a straight line. Very clear to see there. The, the gap between Keithley and Fiducci now being, what, nearly what, one and a half seconds? Huge difference in speed in a straight line, but the AMG is just going to carve through the corners relatively nicely here. So Keithley needs to close up here. Big mistake, though, as Hookvelt just gets the front right onto the grass, and the front just completely steps out there. Massive tank slapper which is normally sent from the rear, but that was from the front this time round. And now he's under pressure here from his teammate just in behind him. It's so a number 88 there. You can see Otto Viani. No love lost there, that's for sure. That's a dive up the inside. <laughs> and wow, you can see the hook belt, even though he's a race winner, he's absolutely getting out of the way here and letting his teammate go through. Wow, that's a very interesting. We're seeing Dur Esports absolutely work together perfectly as a team. And then we'll see an RAG here. Well, then they're just fighting. Well, uh, someone does need to update our graphics. It still says they're virtual drivers by TX3, but there we go. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's great to see those guys fight. It, it's it's sometimes a little unnerving seeing teammates fight, even though we do love to see it. You know, you just got to be uh, careful you don't make any contact, and uh, well, things end up in a very big argument after the race. Uh, I would have thought between the two teammates, but uh, Otsfiani Hookvelt seems like they're on uh, still on good terms for now. Um, but we'll have to see what the slipstream is like for Hoogfeld coming down in towards turn number two this time around. It is your big passing opportunity uh, here at this circuit. They're fighting behind instead, though. Pinches uh, trying to fend off Dornaden and Isaac Price. It's a big, big ask for these Ferraris to keep those BMWs behind going towards the end of these straights. 
Yeah, 100 well, happy just uh, seeing a comment here in the YouTube chat, Jordan Weeks saying it must be a hell of a prize for Siggy to be racing in this. Well, uh, if the top five will go to a sighting event this year for DTM or during the DTM season, and one of those drivers will be judged or, or picked from that five, and they get a full paid season in the DTM Trophy 2023. Yes, it's a pretty big prize to get Kevin Siggy racing, I must agree. Beautiful stuff. Maybe we'll see him in a car. Who knows? Uh, Hassa still leading the race here. Lona is in second position. And again, with the championship standings here, Lona is currently seven points clear of Hassa. And Hassa is just outside that top five. So right now, I don't think there would even be team orders, Connery. I, you know, as, as much as like the team would be like, we want to give Lerna the sec. You know, he's leading in terms of their team mates. Like Hassa needs to get into the top five. So there won't be team orders here, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, but ultimately, a P1 and a P2 will make sure they, they'll be looking really, really good uh, towards just getting themselves up towards Kevin Siggy. Although Kevin Siggy is still only in P3, so he's not that far behind, is he? Uh, he's not going to be losing yeah. too many points, and actually, he'll probably end up extending his championship lead. I mean, Siggy's playing this one relatively smart. So he's just keeping himself within the slipstream of those BMWs ahead, and as well, they're just, he's just allowing them to pull him around the circuit. Uh, basically, so I think Siki has to play the long game, even in the sprint race. Uh, the only chance he'll get to move forward and, and keep those positions will potentially be on the final lap of this race. Um, you know, it's it's a thinking person's race. Uh, I would say in this one, um, Siki certainly knowing how to how to approach these um, and you know formulate a plan in his head of how to proceed. At least that would be my plan of how to proceed. Just sit there until the final lap and maybe pull a pass, uh, pull a pass off on Lona. I don't expect uh, necessarily to get up into the race lead at this point. Uh, I think it would be a bit too big of an ask. But P2, yeah, sure. Oh, it's a mistake there. As Hassa just runs ever so slightly wide. That's, that's, you're going to get away with it there. But if you do not run a final corner, you might be in a little bit of trouble. So you need to be a bit careful here. And you can see they always use the curve there on the inside to help rotate the car. And they'll be doing that around the final corner as well. You see Morris just step that rear out ever so slightly. I think Siggy is closer than he's actually ever been as it stands. And the whole field are really starting to close up here. He wants still for Hassa. We're on board though with, Flo uh, with Moritz Lerner. Looking back there on that Team Redline car of Kevin Siggy, our championship leader, uh, being looked upon by our reigning champion through turn number one they just have to let off the gas ever so slightly a very late apex there as well and you run out as far as you can towards the wall because ultimately you want to maximize your speed down and towards the turn with the slip screen gap just really isn't coming down so bmw definitely has the uh has the the bop if you like this time round. you see the bmw there of kripner in behind not quite able to make the move there, but was closing up significantly on the Ferrari. But yeah, we saw last time out that at the Norris ring, the Ferrari was absolutely standout car. Probably, I would say the same at Imola. Uh, but today, it is definitely the BMWs. But Kevin Siggy is not giving them an inch. It's not. He's keeping himself in contention, which is really all you need to do at this stage. Um, uh, you know, it, and in fact, I think possibly getting himself involved in a fight right now would actually be detrimental to his race because it would, it would uh, well, one, there's a chance that end, uh, ends in an instant, and two, it's, uh, it's slowing both him and whoever he's trying to fight with down. So then there's less chance of uh, positions for the taking a little bit later on. So, um, again, so he's playing it smart at the moment. Of course, you know, all of this is under the backdrop of the pressure being applied by Kripner, although Kripner on this lap seems to have fallen off the tail a little bit here. Uh, and there's another for, there's another for Ferrari in tow as well. We've got to talk about Gianmarco Fiducci, who resides in P5, making it a free, uh, a five-car train, pretty much, uh, for the race lead. Uh, so he's doing well to hold on to this as well. Yeah, 100%. And he doesn't really need to do anything silly here. He's already in the top three in the championship. A top five right now would be great for him. Um, although, to be fair, it's not great that Haas is leading, uh, in all fairness, because Haas is behind him in the championship. So it, that could be uh, having an adverse effect on his championship. But he'll be happy with the top five as we head down towards turn two. And Lona is not close enough to make a move here. Siggy thinks about it and then decides to indeed just sit behind here once again. We've got Ben Spanky watching once again as well. Uh, he's just said that at some point it will, the move will be made by Lona. Yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely agree with you there. I don't think there's going to be uh, any team orders in this just because they can't really afford to. If they want to win the championship, it's an individual championship. Ultimately, you want to help each other out. 
yeah, I fully agree with you on that one. That they will, there will be a battle at some point. But Moritz Lerner having to go defensive there, you know, through turn number two, has cost him here and means Florian Hasser has probably got a lap or two. Well, he's not really going to be under pressure for that potential overtake. We're only six minutes, 40 seconds to go. It is looking very good. I'll tell you what, group two of this uh, of this battle or of this race is absolutely flying here. We've got the number 97 there of Adam Pinchez. It looks like he is battling with Hookvelt. Hookvelt just misses the apex there. It wasn't any squeezing by the other car. That was absolutely a mistake there from the Swede and actually loses two positions then. That's the number 69. Nice. Comes through of Alexander Dorniden. So Dorniden, uh, this is his best performance so far, actually. Uh, he's always in and amongst. He always manages to qualify for finals. And he always has one or two standout performances. Looks like today might be the day in behind that Arnage competition, number 97 as well. Hookvelt, even though he's a race winner so far this season, really had the rough end of the draw. People are just overtaking him left, right and centre. Yeah, it, it does. And well, Dornadent going for the move down the inside of the 97 of Pinches. That's coming up uh, through turn number one. It sort of stacks up Hergfeld behind. Hergfeld gets himself involved in an incident because of that. He had to try and slam on the anchors not to run into the back of the car ahead, perhaps forced down into the grass as well. That is a very, very sketchy uh, uh, portion of the circuit to have a problem as well. You're going at such a high speed uh, through turn number one. Yes, we are in a um, in a simulated environment here, but either still, it, it is so, so scary when you see a car problem there. And well, speaking of problems, Luciano Vitvot has uh, had a spin through the first again. Very rare to see a Balash Esports car uh, having issues, but here we are. And now battling with the media marked Ferrari as well. But yeah, Whitford struggling down there in P25 now, losing positions. Manu Rodriguez, the sole Porsche, making a move here as well. Alex Mosin is currently in that number eight Ferrari. Manu Rodriguez trying to find a gap up the inside there and almost forced the uh, opportunity, then grabs too much curb, cannot get any traction. And Mosin is just going to sweep around the outside in that media marked car. Uh, again, if you see the red cars were media marked on the side, that means they qualified via our wild card event late, uh, earlier on this year. Uh, and they have been fully sponsored for the season by media mark. But yeah, fantastic initiative from them. A little bit further up, we've got, uh, we've got Alex Mosin, we've got uh, Vanna, uh, we have got, uh, who is, uh, Markovic as well, Macedonian, uh, not Macedonian, sorry, the um, Montenegris uh, driver. He is currently in P20. Uh, then a little bit further up here in P19, we've got the Audi that people have mentioned. Why is there only one Audi on the grid? Uh, why is there only one Audi? Uh, well, probably because it's not the fastest. Uh, Ralph Pringer then currently uh, in P19. Then we've got Naji in 18th position. Vermeulen is in 17th. Payich is in 16th. We've then got Piska Hoogveldt, uh, Bodin, uh, who is our lead uh, wildcard, I think. He's our lead wildcard currently in 14th position. Uh, and he's just been overtaken here by Hoogveldt. Then we've got Pfeffer, or Pfeiffer, shall I say, in P12. Not any relation to Michelle Pfeiffer. I love Michelle Pfeiffer, huge fan. Um, they've got Pringer in P11, I believe. Oh, Price. Then it's Dorniden. Yes. Then it's uh, Pinches, Rachel. Then we've got Otto Viani. Keithley in that top six again. He's a bit of a cork in a bottle as it stands. Is old Keithley in that Williams eSports car. And I think this might be the maximum for what that car can achieve, to be completely honest. Uh, Fiducci. Uh, then we've got Krippner. We've then got Siggy, and then we've got Lerner and Hassa. Let's go and check out the lead battle then, as there's another mistake here by Hassa. Three minutes, 30 seconds to go here, and it's go time, isn't it? If you're going to make the move for the lead, it's now or never. It is, but both of these drivers will have in their minds, Siggy is right behind them. So if they mess up, it might be two free spots for Kevin Siggy, which is the last thing both Hassa and Lerner need with regards to the championship. So for Lona, if he does want to make this pass happen, and that's what uh, you think, and of course what Ben Sabanki thinks in the chat as well, he's going to go to the outside, potentially for turn number one. Not the usual overtaking point, a big attempt around there. Wasn't able to carry enough momentum through though. He do get the better speed off the corner thanks to the wider line and coming off the top of the banking a little bit. So Lona's going to have another little look here around the outside this time in towards the chicane. The two teams oh, are fighting. Oh, it's brilliant. He's got him around the outside there. That's oh. an unbelievable move. If there's, if there's a way of doing it so that Siggy's not involved, that is the way to do it. Sweep it around the outside. And I'm not sure Hasser expected that kind of move at all. Uh, and ultimately, it's brought Siggy into play a little bit more, but it's also brought Krippna into play here as well. So ultimately, if they can maybe... It's, I know it's tough because they're battling for P1 and P2. Could you potentially slow Siggy down enough here to give Krippna an opportunity at a podium? Have a 1-2-3 for Dura Esports. I don't know, it's been maybe wishful thinking from me that we're going to see any battling for that. I think the front two would be silly to do so. Uh, but actually, Krippner is under a lot of pressure here from uh, Fiducci. So Gianmarco, Fiducci, 
the team for Zilla, trying to get a little bit of an overlap here. The overlap seems to be on the outside each and every corner, and it's just not quite working out, although Krippen has been forced to go very defensive. Can the Ferrari just sneak something round the final corner? Again, you've just got to tuck underneath that rear wing of the BMW. It's almost impossible to slipstream them, and then you've just got to try and outbreak them into turn number two. Brilliant stuff, though, from Morris Lerner. He is a DTM Esports champion for a reason, and he absolutely deserves to be in the lead of this race now. It was a sensational move. Yeah, that was that was fantastic. Yeah, it caught, it caught me completely off guard as well. I would, I would have thought he just left it until the end of the race. As we see, Fiducci trying to stick his nose in where it perhaps doesn't belong on the way through turn number one. Let's ride on board with him as he tries to maintain the slipstream now into turn two, the next heavy braking zone, and perhaps the, the heaviest braking zone uh, at this circuit. Uh, not close enough to be able to make a move there, but uh, I would have thought um, uh, the drivers would be going for so many looks through that high speed yeah. turn number one, the, the basically the fourth fifth corner of the oval here as well. Um, but uh, it seems like I've been proven wrong. There's no grip on the on the inside. Basically, you need to. It's only really one line through turn number one, uh, and you need to be able to use the lack of grip on the on the real low side to drift the car up towards the wall. Mm. So yeah, anyone on your inside and you, you struggle because instantly the car wants to step out and hit the car on the on the high side. And if the car on the high side isn't going to yield the position, you're both just going to end up in the wall there. So that's what's happened there. Ferrari just had to get out of it effectively. 28 seconds remain here of this race. I think we are, this is the final lap actually, to be honest. We've got what, a couple of corners to go. Uh, 20 seconds, it's going to be close, but I think you'll find that Moritz Lerner has waited right to the death. He did this in week one at Imola in race number one of the season. And he's done it now. Again, it's going to be close here. Actually, I think we might have one more. Kevin Siggy will be praying and hoping it's one more. Six seconds remain. We're about to come across the line. Is it going to be the checker flag or is it another lap? It is going to be another lap. It is. It is literally zero. We had zero <laughs> last time. We've got zero again. One more lap. One more lap. Here we go. Lerner still leads. Kevin Siggy there right up in behind Hassa. Hassa will want this P2 for sure. He's led most of this race. He does not want to give it up. That's for certain here. We've got Leonard Krippner, who's just not in the hunt for a podium here at all. Uh, he's just trying to keep Fiducci in behind. Uh, but this is good news for Siggy. I think the Ferrari, on the longer run, seems to be able to hang a little bit better than the BMWs. I think the BMWs are starting to struggle here uh, because you can see we've got Siggy battling with the front two here in, in Leonard uh, in Lerner and Hassa, sorry. And then we've got Fiducci that's right up the tailpipe here of Krippner. Yeah, three car train at the very front of the field. Uh, now, as Krippner has uh, had to be, well, has had to deal with the uh, Italian of uh, Fiducci behind him, giving him all sorts of issues. But yeah, an unexpected extra lap here at the Lausitz ring for our sprint race of the DTM Esports round number three. Uh, it is the two teammates of Florian Hassa and, uh, and uh, Boris Lona, uh, the latter of which leading at the moment and gaining some much needed points. But Siggy, is there any opportunity in these final uh, few sectors here? You wouldn't have thought so, but this is a lot of pressure to be piling on the back of that uh, number 67. Yeah, 100%. It's just, yeah, too high risk, high, you know, low reward, really. He's already 57 points clear in the championship. He's going to finish in P3, but it's all about Moritz Lerner then, the DTM trophy driver, the current DTM Esports champion. Back to winning ways here at the Lousy Ring for race one of two here. It's round five of the 2022 DTM Esports season. We see a battle here between our lead, Florian Bodin, our lead media mark car, the lead wild card driver. Oh. Piska then is going to finish down as Hoogveld. Did he cross the I think he just about crossed the line uh, in P17 there before he absolutely munched it into the wall as we see a couple of uh, our other sponsored media mark cars as well. As Morris Lerner absolutely deserves to do some donuts there. Here is your official race results then. Morris Lerner, P1, Florian Hasser, Kevin Siggy are your podium. Krippner, Feducci, Keithley, Ottaviani, Rachel, Pinches and Dorniden are your top 10. Morris Lerner is going to be super happy with that. Isaac Price didn't really get much of a mention during that, but he finished in P11. We then got Pfeiffer in 12th position. Fisker, Odin, uh, Payich, Vermeulen. We've then got Hoogveld, Pringer, Markovic and Whitfoot. And then the next set of drivers there, three DNFs, unfortunately. Rodriguez, Mosin, Fox, and Dinya are indeed your 24 drivers. Then we've got Naji, and we've got Vanna and Rudinger, uh, who unfortunately did have a DNF, which is not ideal in the slightest there. So, Connery, Moritz Lerner, 
he had his teammate to overtake. I did mention that there probably isn't going to be team orders here because, you know, it is an individual championship. I feel like they're going to work together in qualifying, but as soon as the race starts, it's, yeah, if you can beat me, you can beat me. It's as simple as that. Very similar to what we saw in IndyCar, actually, uh, with Scott McLaughlin and Joseph Newgard in, in the last race at Texas, where literally Joseph overtook him around the final corner to take the win. I know they're teammates, but ultimately, you know, when it comes to a championship, you are fighting for that individual championship uh, more so uh, in the back of your head. So we saw it. Morris Lerner, he got the opportunity, took the opportunity, Opportunity. We expected nothing less. Is this the, his resurgence now? Is this his opportunity to springboard back up towards where Kevin Siggy resides at the top of the championship? Well, I don't think he has much other choice, uh, to be honest. This, this kind of <laughs> needs to be the, uh, the the situation where Lona gets back into things. Uh, you know, same with Hasser as well. They're in the relatively same part of the uh, the, the, the the scoreboard at the moment. Lona P5, Hasser P6. Many many points adrift of the uh, of the top of the order. So if they if they want to get their seasons back on track, it better start here. That they, that sprint race is a very good start indeed. Um, however, once you get into this endurance race, you know might 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 be a different set of results. I'm expecting the BMWs to be strong next time out in a couple of days. I was going to say in a couple of weeks, but no, a couple of days at uh, at Spa Francorchamps, which is our next circuit as well. So um, it, it could be a tough couple of rounds for the Ferrari and Dewey Esports. You know, with all their BMWs, need to uh, try and capitalize on the on the decent tracks for them the, the most they can. I keep forgetting, well, that's actually this Sunday, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah not, not a very uh, long turnaround for us this time. We've got two races coming for you this Sunday as well. Um, we're going to head to a very quick commercial break. But first, before that, uh, courtesy of Race Room, again, thank you to Race Room, we have three DTM 2021 uh, packs to give away for the in-game of Race Room. So if you'd like to win those, uh, use the hashtag WeLoveDTM on Twitter. I'm going to be picking a winner after this commercial break. Send a picture of your favorite driver, your favorite sim racing driver, I don't know, your favorite car or maybe your favorite cone you've ever seen at a racetrack for DTM. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, after this commercial break, I'm going to pick our first winner. We've got three across the day. But yeah, use the hashtag we love DTM on Twitter. Auto Hero is dein Online-Shop für Gebrauchtwagen. Wir verkaufen nur Autos aus unserem eigenen Bestand. Jedes ist von unseren Kfz-Experten general überholt und rundum aufbereitet. Und du erhältst ein Jahr Garantie. So unbeschwert kann Autokauf sein. Finde jetzt dein Auto bei Auto Hero.
Well, welcome back then, ladies and gentlemen. Cars. It's qualifying for the feature race. It's a full one-hour race with a mandatory pit stop in the middle. After 15 minutes, it will open. You'll see a little red box next to their names. And when it goes green, that means they've done their mandatory pit stop. Uh, winner, first winner, is going to be Shane Johnson Dag. That was one of my favorite moments in the history of my job, um, where that young lad was with the Ferrari T-shirt, and he was in the crowd waving, and then he got to meet uh, Liam Lawson and meet the whole uh, Alpha... Uh, sorry... Uh, the AF Corsa team, uh, it was yeah a very, very cool moment and he had the weekend of his life. So yeah, Shane Johnson Dag, shoot me a DM and I on Twitter and I will send you the code. Uh, let's do another one then. So we are going to give away another one during the formation lap of this feature race. So it is hashtag we love ETM on Twitter. So that's all you've got to do is just send a picture uh, on to or or just let me know who your favorite driver is, your favorite car of all time and all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, just post it to Twitter, hashtag uh, we love DTM. This is courtesy of Race Room as well. So again, a huge shout out to Race Room for providing us with DTM 2021 codes. So we've got two more to give away. So the first one will be indeed Shane uh, Johnson Dag. Uh, I will shoot him a message if he doesn't DM me beforehand. Uh, and then we will give away another one during the formation lap of race number two. And then we will do indeed give one away at the end of the broadcast. Right, here we are. It's qualifying time. And Moritz Lerner, winner of race number one, is absolutely flying here as his first banker time is the quickest here with Fiducci in second position. So Morris Lerner really is taking the ascendancy here. I mean, it's, uh, well, Dewar Esports once again at the top. <laughs> what else can I say? Hoogveld uh, deciding to mow the grass, trying to be the, the groundskeeper here at uh, Lausitz Rink. So uh, hopefully he gets paid for that. But uh, back to the pit lane he goes. Still yet to set a time is uh, Christopher Hoogveld. So he's, he's going to be wanting to get one in sooner rather than later. Uh, here's Kevin Siggy. Um, well, still through sector one. Still has not set a time just yet. He's uh, had a bit of a struggle for the, the first few flying laps of this uh, qualifying team session and characteristically for Ziggy or out all on his own no one else around him no one helping him out in terms of slipstream I mean he still got a decent time doing this last session so uh, so certainly has the capability of putting it up there on his own um, in this one as well but I would have thought that that Ziggy would try and plan things a little bit more and and try and come out at least behind some fast cars to to help out with the straight line speed of the Ferrari but you know what do I know it seems like he's more comfortable out on his own yeah, well, I tell you what, one thing that has surprised me is Leonard Kripner has popped it up into P1. So he kind of fell off the front three in terms of pace in race number one, but right now is right up in and amongst it. Uh, I would say the one thing that we've got to watch out for in terms of Siggy is the track does tend to fall off. It tends to be quicker at the start of the session. So, yeah, maybe under a little bit of pressure here. Possibly. Under a little bit of pressure, I would say. But if anyone can produce exceptional lap times, it is indeed Siggy. He's, is this only going to be good enough, I think, for maybe fifth? A fourth position. There we go. So he does a, a mega sector three, by the way. He was two tenths of a second down through sector two. Uh, but his sector three was incredible. But I just don't think the track's quick enough. I don't think he's got enough help here to be able to, to bridge that gap. Uh, currently, he's got Fiducci ahead of him. Uh, that's a hell of a time from Fiducci, by the way. Uh, but he's, <laughs> look at this, he's helping out the, the Dur Esports team by being in front of them, right? Um, I don't know if, he's, if, if that's, this is meant to be the case, but yeah, he's currently right at the front here of that train of four cars. But they are showing exactly why uh, having a couple of teammates is vital at this stage of the competition. Fiducci playing some 5G chess, perhaps. Maybe he's going to try and file in behind them coming down the straight here and then uh, try and get himself the uh, slipstream. Uh, for the next lap, they they did take a, a, a rather the relax a rather relaxed approach to those final couple of corners to make sure they can wind up and get the run out and carry as much speed as possible coming across the start finish line. Uh, but Fiducci, yeah, he still leads this train for now, so he's not dropping back to uh, to then get a slipstream. So he's sort of helping out Lona here, uh, and of course everyone else as part of the Dory Sports team behind. Um, having to look to see what the lap time situation is for some of the other drivers to see if anyone is uh, sort of making an impact at this stage. Lots of outlaps going on and lots of spinning apparently as uh, we saw one of the, I believe it was one of the RAGs, no it was Team Fortilla um, cars go round and a bit awry I should say for that one. But yeah we're getting into the final moments of the session now so there's not a lot of uh, opportunities for you to get yourself your time on the board now and like you said track probably passes best. Yeah, 100% here. Lona just currently in P2, but he's got a, a, a bit of 
I don't know, slip stream to work with here. He's not too close as well, so he won't be having the huge negative effect through the corners uh, as he's gone, just gone purple through sector number two. So he was only three hundredths of a second off of the best times posted so far in sector number one. And now he is a full tenth of a second up through sector number two. Sector number three, though, this is where the BMW does tend to struggle compared to, let's say, the Ferraris. But he's got that massive toe to use here. All trying to lay that power down. That might be enough to ruin the lap here, I think, as he comes then through the apex of the final corner. And you can see that the car in front is definitely trying to help here 100%, trying to give him as much toe as possible as they come across the line. He does take powers by 600 of a second. Anyone else is going to be able to spring a surprise here? I don't think that's going to be the case. Three BMWs again at the front end. The difference between the first race and the second race, as it stands, Siggy is only in fifth. He is not in fourth position. He's not going to be able to split the BMW straight away unless he gets an absolute worldie of a start. So we've got Jack Keithley here, P6. His qualifying pace has been really good. Mm. Tends to struggle in the race by the look of things. Still one minute, 30 seconds to go. The BMW is just striking once again. Yeah. Uh, maintaining that dominance uh, in qualifying and, and potential dominance in the race as well. We'll just have to see how it turns out. But uh, Florian Haas, uh, I mean, he's gone faster once again through sector one this time around. So it might, it might not be totally done. Not, not, not 100%. He is sort of running on his own without any other, any assistance at the moment, though. So maybe this uh, uh, won't be uh, won't be a pole position setting time. But I have been wrong before, especially pushing wide like that. Not the ideal line coming out of the right hand of that. Uh, but you can see uh, lots of drivers down towards pit lane, yeah, and that's a uh, lap time invalid there, uh, which makes sense for Florian Hasser, considering how much of an off-track excursion that was. He was basically on the moon there yeah. for his exit, <laughs> so yeah, there's bound to be invalidated for sure. Uh, there's Dinya, who's currently in 11th spot. Uh, where are the Hungarians in this? Uh, Pinches currently in P15, Naji then is currently in P16. Uh, still yet, uh, this still could change here, so we see a big spin there uh, as well. I think that was uh, Michael Raschel. Uh, Morris Lerner then is provisionally on pole position. I'm not sure that's going to change either. Leonard Krippner is in second position. Florian Hasser is in third. Kevin Siggy in fourth position. Gianmarco Fiducci in fifth. Then got Jack Keithley in sixth. Max Pfeiffer is in seventh position. We've then got Peter Fisker in uh, eighth. We've then got Isaac Price, who is in ninth position. Needs a good shave, that lad. Mm -hmm. We've then got Michael Raschel in P10. The next set of drivers, then Attila Dinia is in 11th position. We've then got Alessandro Ottaviani uh, in 12th position. That's huge here because Ottaviani coming into today's championship was actually second in the championship. So, yeah, big news for drivers such as Florian Hasser, Kripner as well, maybe even Attila Dinia, although Dinia is only one position ahead. Christopher Hoogveld is actually going to be behind him. So not the greatest of times as well for him. But we've got seven minutes left to go before we head to our next race. So seven minutes to go here. Um, yeah, it's the BMW show, isn't it? Again, it's Dura Esports really showcasing their skill set in terms of their team advantage. Just judging by how many cars we've got, we see this, you see this, Connery, in Pescalot when Coanda was racing. You're seeing it with uh, Redline. We're seeing it with VRS in that series as well now. Um, it's vital to have teammates in these competitions, even though this is an individual championship. I, I mean, it's something you see in the real world as well. How many times do you see the teammates in F1, for example, helping each other in qualifying uh, and have a mutual uh, understanding of, you know, give it one time, you, I give you the slipstream, next time I, uh, you, you give me the slipstream. It's just sort of a deal like that. However, the problem is exacerbated a little bit when you have more than two cars. Um, if you're able to run out, around in these big packs, then that becomes a little bit more unfair to a lot of the drivers that maybe are privateers or they're the only one from their esports team in this session. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit more of a struggle to find for them to find someone to work with and someone that's going to be uh, um, uh, returning the favor, uh, so to speak. So, yeah, it, it's a little bit of an unfair element, at least if you ask me. I mean, there are some series that I commentate on, on that actually forbid, especially forbids teams trying to run around uh, in packs. Uh, so um, there's different ways of looking at it. But like I said before, though, if you have this advantage and it's not explicitly banned by the rules, of course you're going to go for it. Yeah, 100%. You have to. It's as simple as that. You've got to take your opportunities when it indeed presents itself to you. Right. Again, courtesy of Race Room, we have got some DTM 2021 codes to give away. Uh, we've got five minutes left. So if you want to win yourself some of those codes, use the hashtag we love DTM. So all you've got to do is just post a picture or, or I don't know, not even a picture. You can just say who your favorite driver is, what your favorite car is and all that good stuff. Just use the hashtag we love DTM on Twitter and I'll be picking a winner during the formation lap 
of the race here. Well, it was, again, like I said, the BMW show in race number one. Although we did see the Ferrari start to pick up pace later on in the stint in terms of the 15-minute race, are we going to see the Ferraris come strong here? Because this is an all-one-hour race, isn't it? You've got two effective stints of 30 minutes if you split it with the pit stop they have to serve uh, in terms of the tyres. But does this now favour the Ferraris? Uh, I, I really don't think so. Um, the, the, the problem for the Ferraris is, is, is basically this. If, if they don't have the slipstream help from any of the faster cars in the straight line ahead of them, the lap times are not so good. Um, it's, I mean, unless you're someone like Siggy or Fiducci, uh, who are the, the faster Ferraris in this session, you're, you're basically in the dust as far as lap times are concerned. So I think the, the Ferrari strategy for this one is keep yourself in the draft for as, as long as you possibly can, uh, as long as you possibly can, uh, especially if you're only just about hanging on to uh, faster cars ahead uh, and, and try and pit with them. But then again, that you know may not be the winning strategy, you know? It, they might try to pull off a little bit of an undercut, but the thing is, the more that you're left out there on your own on an undercut, even though you're on fresher tires, might still not work out in your favor. So it's all, as with most things in motorsports, it's all about compromises. It's just a matter of which one's going to be the right one. Yeah, 100% agree with you on that one as well there. Let's talk about the championship picture. Then I'm just going to quickly mention what, what it looked like coming into today. Um, actually, maybe you have a graphic yeah. to chuck up on screen here, Connor. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So this is what the championship looked like coming into today. Kevin Siggy, he's on 160 points. He was 53 points clear of Alessandro Ottaviani. Uh, so, yeah, Siggy was looking really, really good here. Fiducci currently in P3, but we know that Gianmarco Fiducci's in 12th position on the grid here in first race number two. So not the greatest of days. Christopher Hoogvelt, we saw him finish P17 in race number one, which opens the door for Moritz Lerner and Florian Hatter because they finished P1 and P2 in race number one. Leonard Krippner finished P4. So he's going to move up the order here as well. He's qualified well for race number two uh, as well. So yeah, if you are, Ottaviani's going to be good, but if you're Fiducci, you may be in a little bit of trouble here today. You've got a bit of a gap to work with uh, in terms of Leonard Krippner. You're looking at the gap there, it's what, 41 points. So, yeah, he's got something to work with, but, you know, you keep performing like this in qualifying, you're going to put yourself in a position where Leonard Krippner is just going to easily overturn that deficit. Uh, Attila Dinia, he's in P8. You've got Adam Pinches, they're just not really high enough in qualifying here, really, to... to push the boundaries and, and potentially get themselves up the order. Uh, Axel Vermeulen as well. We haven't seen much from him today. So really, it, it now sort of becomes a seven-horse race in this championship with Leonard Krippner and Hassa. Uh, sorry, if Hassa and Lerner and obviously Krippner getting that P4, they've performed exceptionally well today. And if they could do the same in this second race, they will be in that top five going you know, into, what, the final four races of the season. Yeah, they will be. And you've got to set yourself up that platform. You, you, you've got to get that... Uh, it you got to get to the end of the season to even be competing uh, for a championship at the end of the season. It's the most uh, simple, the most obvious way of putting it, but it, it, it's true. Like, you, you can't just, uh, it can't just be your God-given right to be fighting for the championship at the end. You need to put the work in. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is why the, the middle portions of these seasons are so important because you need that those consistent results to be able to allow yourself to be within striking distance at the very end. I did see in uh, the wonderful DTM YouTube chat uh, that uh, Ben Savanke is saying, I'm hearing the undercut could work very well here. Well, Ben Savanke certainly has much more experience with race room than I do, so therefore I would trust in his word a little bit more. Um, but it, again, it's... Uh, well, how that interacts, though, with remaining in the slipstream and, and the whole um, the, the situation regarding that still remains to be seen. BMW is doing that on other BMWs. Potentially, if we start to see a lot of infighting with regards to the Dora Esports cars, um, then potentially someone like a Siggy or a, a Fiducci can try and capitalize on all that if they're, if they're infighting too much, not only on track, but in the strategy as well. Um, but it's really, really hard to say at this point. I, I think you got to take this race as, as it comes uh, with, with yeah. regards to, you know, if, if you're a driver, because there's, uh, there's sort of no way of really predicting things at the moment. It's, it's, it's very, very, very circumstantial. And most races are anyway, but this one more so. I'll tell you what, Ben, if you're about for the rest of this championship, so Sunday, and you know the dates here. We can, um, let's check the dates up on the screen here while we've got about 15 seconds to go. We'll check out the yeah. calendar here for the rest of the season. We are back here this Sunday. Uh, we've got Spa, Franco Shop. Then we've got the Red Bull Ring on the 21st of April and then Portimao on the 28th of April. Ben, if you're around, 
this stage, during the warm-up for race number two, it'd be good to have you come in and have a little chat for a couple of minutes each uh, broadcast because you are a bit of a race room specialist. So if you're up for that, shoot me a DM on uh, Twitter and we'll have a little chat with you on Discord. It'll be simple. Just join Discord and you can give us a little bit of insight in, as to what we could expect from the racing. I think that might be a nice little touch, actually. So, yeah, let me know via a DM and, uh, on the old Twitter. Right, here we go, then. Warm-up is done. We're here for the race. It is the final race of today's broadcast. We will hit the halfway point of the championship. It's 12 races this season. This is going to mark number six. It is a full one hour race. We've got a 30 minute pit window. Remember as well, where they do indeed have to change their tires uh, as well. So we're about to head onto the formation lap. Let's pick our next winner, shall we? Let's just refresh hashtag we love DTM on Twitter. Right, and I am going to give it to Nico911. So Nico91113 at Nico9113, uh, who is a Porsche fan, judging by that name and the picture he sent me, and he's supporting Florian Hasser. Shoot me a DM on Twitter. Congratulations, you've won yourself a DTM 2021 um, code for all of the cars and deliveries in Race Room. Uh, we've got one more code to give away, courtesy of Race Room. So during this race, if you want to use the hashtag we love DTM on Twitter, that's all you got to do is just use the hashtag we love DTM. Maybe tweet what your favorite car is, your favorite driver of all time your favorite circuit and all that good stuff as we see a Ford Dilla car head off into uh, the garage there. I'm sure that everything is fine. Um, then you could potentially be a winner. But yeah, Nico911, congratulations. You are a winner. Shoot me a DM on Twitter and I will send you uh, the code later on after the broadcast. Here we go. Formation lap time. It's a long lap here and it's a long race for them to negotiate. The sprint race, normally lots of shenanigans happen as, as everyone is trying to indeed gain as many positions as much time as possible. As well, Peter Pisco has just been disqualified for speeding in the pit lane. So that's, um, that's early. <laughs> that, doesn't normally, uh, that doesn't normally happen until midway through the race, but that is uh, not ideal. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Um, but the, yeah, the Ford Dilla driver is well, going to be furious with that. That one's a bit of a weird one. Um, not entirely sure what race control are going to do with that one. I'm not sure. Because, yeah, yeah, we did see a Team Fordzilla car go down on towards the pit lane. That, that must have been pretty scary. Um, and then we got the notification that apparently he's being disqualified for something. We don't know if it's actually speeding in pit lane or whether it's uh, some other issue. Maybe well, no, that's what it said. Yeah, I mean, that's what it said, but... I don't know how I don't know how he could have spun on pit lane when they haven't been on pit lane for this if, even to get to the grid because they just no he went themselves. to the pits he so he quick, I don't know what happened he obviously didn't ready up or something yeah and I saw him driving on the exit of the pits I actually saw him driving in the pit lane ah so he's trying to get his position on the grid I, I assume I don't know hmm. but um, all I know is he's not he's not in the race right he's, he's yeah. probably been sent right to the back and he's probably grayed out and you're there we go yeah he's in the pits he's done. So that is a disqualification here for Petr Pliska. And I just don't think he's readied up in time, yeah. to be honest. And then tried to come out the pits and get his position. <laughs> so, yeah, not worked out too well there, um, ultimately. Right, let's get some names on the screen then. Let's get some racing action going. As we've got our first formation lap to finish off here. So Lerner and, yeah, we've got Leonard Krippner as our front row. Then we've got Hasser and Siggy. Uh, and then Fiducci in behind. So oh, Siggy did get P4 in the end. So he did change. He did get up ahead of Fiducci. Uh, which is something we didn't notice, or I didn't notice, it, to say this. I'm not going to throw you under the bus, Connery. You probably did, but yeah, here we are. So it's a full one-hour race here. Can the BMWs again go out there and dominate this race? I, do you know what? I think the Ferraris are going to be able to go a bit better in terms of a longer run. Expect to see the uh, expect to see the Ferraris come strong near the end of this race. If he can stick around the BMWs and be near them, I think the Ferraris is going to be very good near the end here. Oh, here we go then. One hour of racing is round six of 12, the DTM Esports 2022. We're here at the Lousis Ring. It's the feature race. It's a full one hour. There is a man who can hit stop. It is the BMWs at the front here. Moritz Lohner then is your pole sitter with Kripner in second position. You can see the number one on the car as we do go green light racing here. And we head down in towards turn number one. And Lerner's got a very good start here. And actually, Leonard Kripner, I think, maybe, no, it's Hassa. So Hassa is going to take P2. This is a bit of contact there. Ottaviani's up ahead there of Siggy. But the momentum would have all been lost there from the touch on the front of his car. But I think Siggy, maybe just about ahead he is, up to P4 he will go. And he's being gifted a spot there because he did lose out off the start. He was absolutely gained one there as well. Oh, I think oh. Keithley's absolutely sent one on the inside. He's just hit the orange barrier there, full of tyres. We've got Ottaviani, uh, Fanucci, sorry, trying to retake the position here. He's going to have to sweep around the outside of Siggy, a very difficult corner to make an overtake on the inside, let alone round the outside. Siggy is just about going to hold on. 
And wow, what a send that was from Keith, who didn't work out. Uh, but as it stands, the front five are as they were, minus Siggy. I think, well, Siggy, no, did qualify B4, so they are as they were. Yeah, that was a, a little bit of a cluster down in towards turn number two for the first time. It, it could have ended in tears, but it's good to see everyone able to, um, well, make sure that they're able to get through that unscathed. A uh, little bit of a jostling for position in the mid pack here. This is all behind, uh, or rather involving now, Alessandro Ottaviani uh, fighting out with Alexander Dorden. We've got Isaac Price involved in this one as well. As you see, the RHG Esports car of uh, Ottaviani now dive down the inside. Can't, well, yeah, well, it gets it done, to be fair. I was going to criticize him for that one, but no, gets past in here. Job done. Yeah, whilst drivers are West Fiducci in all of this, Fiducci is P5, yeah. Ottaviani kind of has to has to make these moves here again to start the day he was second in the championship and he just yeah with drivers who are behind him in the championship being Lerner and Hasser those two drivers are currently P1 and P2 again for the second time in a row so they could overturn the deficit that Otto Viani had over the, over them because he was on 107 points so it's a big day today for Otto Viani has to find something magical out of his magic hat as Leonard Kripner here is ahead of Siggy Siggy had already got up to P3 in race number one by this point and actually he's under more pressure from the Ferrari behind him and he's able to put on the BMWs in front here but yeah fascinating stuff here can the Ferraris hang with the BMWs by the looks of things in the early stages not at the moment well we saw the sprint race that, that they could just about get there with, um, with uh, as long as they don't make too, too many mistakes through the middle sector of the lap um, because, well, the middle sector of the lap is typically where the Ferraris are a bit stronger because of the uh, tight and twisty sections, especially um, in through the first sector. Um, they, they tend to close up a little bit more. Uh, so as long as they nail that, they should be able to hang with uh, the BMWs at the front uh, relatively well coming down the straights. Not enough for them to have an opportunity, typically, down into the heavy braking zones like we saw uh, in the 15-minute sprint race. But it, it keeps themselves in contention. That's simply what the, the only thing they have to do here. You know, you keep yourself in it, and you could potentially win it. And once we get that pit lane in open, you, ha you do have more options. Potentially, you come down in early, you try and get that undercut going. Uh, we'll, we'll see how... Well, we will see if that results in any uh, in any benefit for those who do go for that option. Um, but then again, you know that could be easily be covered off by the drivers that are under threat of it. Because you know, Lona has a grip there. They know that Singing Fiducci are going to have to pull off something special, potentially something in the strategy, to be able to get themselves ahead here. We've already seen Siggy do the uh, undercut, haven't we, with uh, Imola, where he was being chased down by Lona for pretty much the whole entire, well, for whole 25 minutes at the end of the race after um, after Lona hit a little bit later, and it didn't work out for Lona. It was uh, it was Siggy that went out and got the victory. So we know he's got previous there, and he'd like to come in a little bit earlier. Uh, so today is really the perfect prime opportunity to do so. Lead though, still indeed, Moritz Lerner is on board here with Michael Rashall for the eSports. Would love to make it a one, two, three, four at the front here. Needs to get past Keith Lee, needs to get past Fiducci, needs to get past Siggy. Uh, Rashall might be the driver they could use here to come in really early as soon as the pit window opens just to get track position if he can gain a couple of spots by being really really quick on another set of fresh uh, tires he's being dragged along here by Keith Lee but again the AMGs just seem a little bit off the pace um, just around here specifically they're just dropping a little bit further back here from Fiducci uh, Siggy again P4 then got Leonard Kripner, Hasser and Lerner those all within a second of each other at the front end of front three uh, but it looks like Siggy is able to hang here in the first couple of laps maybe just taking it easy but now starting to close in on that front three yeah um, again both the Ferraris right now both Siggy and uh, Fiducci are uh, you know this is about as well as this the first couple of laps of this race could have gone um, of course it would have been ideal to try and get a jump on the initial start on those cars ahead but that simply didn't happen so you kind of have to take the next best thing and sit in behind and now i get the feeling at least for our leading pack it's just going to be a whole bunch of waiting until that uh, pit lane opens and then we might see more developments at the front uh, once that happens but for now i think they would be very comfortable running in their single file line someone who's not comfortable running single file at the moment until you didn't isaac price uh, they're fighting uh, for a top 10 spot Isaac Price just sent one down the inside there. Beautiful stuff from him. Uh, he's wearing, sporting a very lovely woolen jumper there uh, as well. 
but yeah, uh, just sent one up the inside of Dinya and it made it stick again. Isaac Price is someone who's uh, very similar to Alexander Dornigan. If there's an esports final, tends to be that. <laughs> just <laughs> manages to qualify for it. Uh, maybe not having the strongest of days or strongest of championships that you would expect from someone like Isaac Price, but yeah, he's he's on his own. He hasn't got anyone to work with in this championship, so he's very similar to someone like Kevin Siggy. Kind of have to rely on themselves here. It might be worth finding a couple of mates in this championship to work with to get some slipstream, maybe some ex-teammates, because he has driven with some of the drivers on the grid as well. His twin brother, Jack Easley, being one of them. Um, but yeah, it's just P10. I think, don't think that's the worst thing in the world. I think it's a really good performance in all fairness. Uh, Dinya is going to try and maybe retake the position for the Malin. He's currently in 12th position, needs a big performance, really, if they want to um, move up the top towards the sort of higher positions in the top 10. Currently is in the top 10 before today started, but not had a great day here today. You see that very bright green TX3 livery. Uh, they're just in behind them is Alexander Dornigan, who we expect to be in these finals. Uh, uh, had a bit of a standout performance, I'd say, for the season uh, in this previous race today in round number five, in round six, just outside that top 10. Lee Dope, still 1.2 seconds separating the front three. Uh, Lerner is just stretching his legs a little bit here. Passer in second spot. Leonard Krippner is in third. Again, he can't, you can't really rely on Krippner to just slow down Siggy because Krippner's got his own championships that we were worried about here as well. But Fiducci now really has dropped off. So this five-way battle is starting to become a bit of a four-way battle. But I tell you what, I think you're fine. Jack Heathley maybe starting to close in on that Ferrari and actually the gap looks a bit, a bit bigger on that camera angle. The, the other camera angle lied to me a little bit. Um, but yeah, on his own now is Fiducci and he really will be wanting to gain a few more positions than he is currently in to try and guarantee himself a top five because the two drivers, uh, or two of the drivers that are behind him in the championship are currently second and third. So, yeah, not the best of days for Fiducci as it stands. Yeah, and, well, the biggest issue right now is falling off the back of Siggy. Um, so the ideal situation for Fiducci would be maintain his position in that uh, top five pack, but he, he's dropping off the back and now... Potentially, he might get swallowed up by the pack behind. They are a bunch of Mercedes, so therefore, uh, you would have thought that the Ferrari would uh, would hold them off relatively well. But uh, with Fiducci's face at the moment, it's it's going to be a bit of a struggle for him uh, if that trend continues, of course. And last Keithley's thing. got to work really hard. Yeah, he's got to work really hard here. He's got to get that slipstream off Fiducci and maybe drag him towards that front four. Uh, I think you'll find you're going to find all of the AMGs coming early today, uh, mm. just because. They're down on pace. They're not as quick as the Ferraris or the BMWs. But if they can maybe grab a couple of spots or maybe grab five seconds extra over the course of maybe a 10-lap stint, if the other drivers come in a little bit later again, it's not all in their own hands, of course, um, then that's their best opportunity, right? That undercut, again, Ben has said in the chat that the undercut is, is a genuine possibility today. They have to try at least that. Otherwise, it's just going to be a very long race for them. Oh, I'm Ooh. That's uh, yeah. Markovic. Oh, he nearly did your, he nearly annoyed you there, Connery, didn't he? He thought about it. He thought about making you really angry. Markovic there. Well, how young is Markovic, by the way? I didn't realize again. Markovic was that young. He looks very young indeed. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, again, a very, very phenomenally talented driver. Not having the best of days today, that's for sure, even in race number one. Uh, and that looks like it might be a crabbing car as well. It's sort of driving sideways. Uh, Siggy now has isolated Krippner by the looks of things, which is perfect. I think Krippner's still just about getting a tow from the two cars in front. And actually, definitely is getting a tow from the two cars in front here. Uh, but the more pressure Siggy can put on here, the more opportunity there could be to make an overtake where the BMW in front isn't gaming that situation. Look at him closing up here, down towards turn number one. And again, can you force your nose up the inside, force that BMW offline? I think the BMW's been gone offline itself, in all fairness here. Uh, Siggy, again, with a bit more of an opportunity here. That BMW is going to start to struggle the further it falls behind the front two. And it will be, uh, it'll be pretty easy pickers, I think, for Siggy, considering how fast he is out of that final corner. I think a podium is probably the best he could be looking at, to be honest, judging by the pace of the front two. Asser and Lerner have been exceptionally fast all day. Krippner maybe not quite on their pace in terms of the race pace. Uh, but Krippner now is just going to try and hold this Ferrari behind. Yeah, this is a bit of an awkward situation for Siggy to be in because uh, now his hand is forced. Um, the, the gap between Hasser and Krippner, like you said, has been extending. And if Siggy wants any say with regards to finishing any higher than third place, he needs to bridge the gap, gap and quickly. He does need to get past Krippner and then hope beyond hopes that he doesn't lose enough time in doing so to then fall off the back and, and not get the slipstream from Lona and Hasser. So, 
yeah, tricky situation for Siggy. Um, he's hoping that Kripner picks up the pace a little bit and, and brings uh, both of them uh, back up towards the front too. But if that doesn't happen, Siggy will have to act and quickly, I would have thought. Yeah, I think the pit stop phase here really is going to be where people um, take their chances. I, I, again, I feel like there's certain drivers that have to try the undercut. Uh, there are certain drivers that don't need to. The BMWs are stay out as long as they possibly can, right? They'll try and split the tyres. Uh, unless, unless, like, someone like Siggy comes in, I guess. If Siggy comes in early, they all have to come in early. So it might be one of those races where they all just come in straight away and just try and uh, get onto the best strategy possible by having those quick laps, but then struggle near the end, which is, again, where I feel like if the Ferrari's in and amongst it, I think this Ferrari has the potential to close that gap later on in this race. Again, it remains to be seen whether that is going to be the case. But Leonard Krippner here is really the cork in the bottle and really giving an opportunity for Lona and indeed Hassa to just drive away half a second between those two. Uh, and Siggy will want to try and get this done as soon as possible. There's really no slipstream coming for that BMW now as well. So right now, it should be easy pickings once they get down in towards turn one through towards turn number two of the next lap. You would have thought so, but I, I don't think uh, Siggy was able to line up the run as perfectly as he would have wanted through turn one that time. It, it's, it's an awkward piece of circuit because if you have someone slow on the inside, or at least you're, you're catching someone rapidly on the inside, you can't exactly just swing that car to the outside and hope the, the car grips up for the exit of the corner. You, you just kind of have to lift out a little bit, allow the, cor the car ahead of you to try and negotiate the corner, and then all of a sudden you've, you've lost the run that you're able to establish out of the, the final corner on the previous lap. So, uh, yeah, it, this needs to be timed. Patience. This needs to be timed so well. Yeah, you're right. And there's such a thing as, if we go on board here, uh, it's such a thing as being too close. Yeah. So right now, perfect. Nice gap to work with. But if you come towards the apex here, you don't want to be right behind him. You want to keep, you want to maintain this gap here. You should hear him lay off early. There you go. Let's off early. And now he should try and punch through. I think he might be a little bit too far behind here. In case he may have let off a little bit too much there. Uh, yeah, he's not going to get close enough down towards turn number two. But yeah, there is such thing as being too close. I guess a lot of people who are watching right now would have, have raced around Spa. Uh, Radio No Rouge, you could be too close going up through there and you let off and you lose so much time going down towards the Kemmel Strait as Pfeiffer maybe potentially losing a spot here to the RAG car of Ottaviani. Ottaviani leaving the perfect amount of room on the inside, sweeps it round to the left-hand side there, and actually it's a little bit out of shape on the exit, uh, but beautiful stuff there from the Italian, and really has to make these moves. He's got AMGs in front of him here. It's a case of you pretty much, if you get right behind him, you're guaranteed to make a move because you're, you've got the quicker car, but it's can you catch up to these two? I think the, the, the defining factor is going to be that Russell and indeed Keithley aren't in the same team. They are going to be battling as hard as they possibly can, which should give the opportunity for them to close up as we do indeed now have the pit window open. So that red box next to their names has just appeared. Once that turns green, you know that that driver has indeed come into the pits. They all have to come in and they all have to change their tires. Do we see anybody come in right now? Uh, it would be a big call for Siggy um, uh, uh, if he can't line up this run and it feels like he can't get past on this lap then potentially he might be looking to come down in but no he does stay out there we do have a couple of cars coming down in you can see our um uh, our timing screen not dealing with it rather well but we've got our alexander dorner then uh, heading his way down in now i also saw uh like a page. yeah a couple of drivers don't so yeah dorner then in page in uh Hergfeld also coming down in as well it makes sense for some of these guys further down the field especially if they they're not in uh, perhaps their, their usual running spot. Of course, come down in, try and take the gamble, try and get the fresher tyres, try and get the undercut done, and then hope you can yeah. hold on for the end. Three, three different manufacturers as well. Yeah. So, so yeah, this, uh, this is an experiment here. We will see how quick they are um, in terms of uh, do they gain a load of positions here? Alex Mosin, also another driver that's popped into the pit as well. Uh, so the lead cars, uh, the lead actually has come out uh, to 1.4 seconds here. So there's been a mistake, I think, from Hassa. So Hassa. It's now just dropped a little bit further back. And do you split the strategy? I think they've got a big enough gap here for one of them to come in, for Hassa or Kripner, just to cover off any potential drivers just in behind them that could try and undercut them. At least put one of you in there. Um, again, is it going to have that much of a detrimental effect on your performance in the race? If it is, of course, you won't be able to do it. But it might be an idea just to cover off any potential advancements from a driver behind. What do you think? Uh, the... the the, the Dory Sports have the best seat in the house at the moment. Uh, they they have so many options. They can 
uh, keep Krippner in this position. Just I mean, they might even tell Krippner, okay, just make Siggy's life hell. Try and keep him behind as much as possible. Allow Lona and Hassa to run away at the front because the more of a buffer that those two cars at the front have back to Siggy, the more leeway they have with regards to strategy. So they can see then Siggy come down in early. They don't have to react immediately to try and cover that off. They can wait a lap. They can wait two laps. Uh, and then they can come down in and then they'll have the marginally better tires towards the end of the event. But Siggy's got himself a pretty good run through the turn number one, but still can't make anything of it uh, into the breakings on the turn two. And, well, it's, it's my favorite phrase ever. You have to be faster at the right points. There's no point in being faster overall if you're not where, faster where it matters. Yeah, that's a good point there as well. But again, I just don't think Krippner can afford to play the team game here. He's got to be looking out for himself only because he, he came into this round or these two rounds today in seventh position. Top five, they do indeed get a sighting event prize uh, at a DTM event this year where, the, again, they will be judged and one of them will win the prize, which is to get a full season paid in the DTM trophy. Krippner can't afford to play this team game where there's no way that he's being told, oh, hold him up for us to, to advance here. Mm. Absolutely not. He 100% needs to be gaining more points here uh, about... Uh, he needs to be gaining more points here than Ottaviani and Fiducci. Those are the two. Hoogveld's nowhere near. Hoogveld is absolutely nowhere near today. He's going to drop out of this top five. He was in fourth position. Um, Attila Dinia is nowhere near. Adam Pinchez is nowhere near. Vermeil is nowhere near. They're eighth, ninth, and tenth position. So right now, uh, Krippner just needs to be as many positions ahead of Fiducci as possible. Fiducci is currently in P5. Here's the battle, though, for P3. And this is the first time he's going to go for it. He absolutely is. He tried to force the overlap to force that BMW offline. And ultimately, on the entry to the corner, the BMW was offline. But could the BMW punch out here and get a really nice exit down towards turn two? It looks like he has done once again. So there's not going to be a change of position here down in towards that very, the harshest breaking zone that we do indeed have here around the Lazarus Ring turn one oval. But again, Leonard Krippner is holding on, but look at the amount of time he's losing to the front two. Are you losing sufficient amount of time here to try and gain track position if you're Krippner by doing the early pit stop now? Okay, you know you're going to give free air to Siggy, but Siggy hasn't got any slipstream to work with or anything like that. So it might be a case of it, it, it's worthwhile for Krippner just to bring it in, get those fresh set of tires on. And just get some really quick lap times in. Uh, it, it really does depend on where, it, where, his, where his priorities are. I mean, you said that he uh, uh, possibly won't be playing the team game here. Um, the team game would be stay out as long as uh, as Siggy stays out uh, and just be in his face this entire time. Um, however, if Krippner wants a little bit more than a P3 or a P4 today, uh, then potentially he might have to do something over the next couple of laps in terms of trying to get the undercut done over his teammate and, and then try and force their hand. Uh, so. You know, it, it's all about do you, do you benefit the team or do you try and help out the team or do you try and help out yourself? Well, I say it's a driver's championship only. Therefore, that is your decision made. Here we go then. Opportunity knocks once again for Kevin Siggy. Has he learned from the three previous attempts here as to try something a little bit different? He is very close. It's just difficult to follow through here. If anyone's ever tried IndyCar on any game or, or uh, in oval, because you don't really use GT cars around oval circuits uh, all too often. If you try and follow another car on an oval circuit, it is almost impossible, uh, especially when they've got a little bit of downforce, such as a GT3 car. It just the jet wash there is horrendous. So yeah, again, Siggy finding it very difficult to indeed hold that line there. Although he's ooh, nearly found a gap there to work with. And Krippner now, they're just going to lose so much time to the front two here. This is about the right. third, I think, now for the race. But look how close he's able to get here. There's a long run down in towards a right-handed hairpin. It's a long-winded hairpin. And Siggy's going to have to try and sweep this around the outside here again. He's actually got to hope that Krippner just runs off the apex. He has done perfectly. And now he's going to send one up the inside. And he just loses the rear himself as well on the limit of the car. And Krippner lives to fight another day. He does. Another opportunity in towards the final sector, though, for Siggy, taking the big wide arc through, forcing Krippner to have to commit to the shallower line. You'll be a little bit slower off the corner as a result, but this has lost them about six tenths of a second already. Maybe a little bit of a push there from He's Siggy. Done it. He's in. No, no, it was Krippner coming down on towards the pit lane. It's an awkward pit yep. entry here, but Krippner's made the call. Siggy stays out. Yeah, 100%. I, I figured that was always going to be the case here. Krippner will... Well, he takes the lead of the race. Love that with the inside line pit <laughs> entry. Uh, but yeah, Krippner needed to do that. He needed to just... I think that they were hemorrhaging time here, both of them. Um, so it makes sense for them to split the strategy here. I reckon Siggy will respond straight away. If he's not a, a lightningly quicker 
than he was previously when they were battling, he will absolutely bring the car in as well. I think he has to. So I don't think this battle's over at all right now, but Krippner has made a very, very good decision here. Should be the lead car in terms of everyone that's pitted. Um, so yeah, he's got nothing really to worry about. Shouldn't really have to deal with any traffic here as well. Uh, as we see here, a potential move being made by Isaac Price there on Pfeiffer. Again, not Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, but yeah, it is a brilliant stuff. It's just his favorite corner, isn't it? We're going to name it Isaac Price Corner by the end of this. And it's a just, a, yeah, we haven't seen many overtakes really, have we? To be honest, around here, considering I was expecting to see loads. But Isaac Price seems to be able to get that job done. We'll, we'll see things pick up in the second stint, I would have thought. Um, uh, the, the, yeah. the, the first of these stints, apart from the first couple of laps, tend to be uh, a little bit calmer than the second. So uh, I, I would certainly just, just wait and hold the phone a little bit before making a, 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 a big statement about how we haven't seen any overtaking. So we will potentially see that uh, in maybe the final 10 minutes of this race when everyone gets the whole go forward attitude. Uh, but yeah, with this pit stop phase, no, not many people coming down in for a super early stop here. Of course, we, we did see a, a bigger handful of early stoppers um, at both of the previous races, but everyone feeling a little bit more tire limited here. They don't want to have that big, long 45 minute stint or whatever it is uh, towards the end of the race. Uh, decided to go for about 39 minutes instead. At least that's the option that uh, Keith Lee and a few others have gone for. Yeah, so Keithy into the pits then. It is not the decision being made by Siggy to come in. So he's going to stay out for a little bit longer. And I guess he feels like he's pretty quick, which is always a, a good thing. Well, <laughs> so Siggy is staying out. Well, Siggy, on that last lap, he took out a tenth and a half out of Hassa. So oh, wow, there's, okay, yeah. there's still some pace in that car. Yeah, I, f I genuinely think the Ferrari on a longer run is going to come good. I, I think he might be a little bit too far back now from Hassa and Lona. Although it's Kevin Siggy, who knows? Siggy can do magical things. That's, that's why he wears a magic hat. It's as simple as that. Uh, Rachel now moves up to P5. And again, if you get a bit of clear air for the first time in a race, an opportunity to maybe uh, just grab a couple of really quick lap times before you do indeed come into the pits. Um, we have got one more code to give away, by the way for the DTM uh, 2021 pack on Race Room. So if you are a sim racer and you want to win yourself these cars that you're seeing on screen and all the liveries, so all of the cars, all the liveries, uh, you need to use the hashtag we love DTM. So go ahead to Twitter and tweet your favorite driver and DTM of all time, or maybe your favorite sim racer. Uh, you could also even post your favorite barrier you've ever seen around a race circuit. But yeah, use the hashtag we love DTM. I'll be picking one more winner after this race because we've already picked two, uh, although the second one hasn't even responded to me yet. So, uh, yeah, the, we will be giving away a third uh, code to so make sure you use the hashtag we love DTM. So here we go then. Moritz Lona is in P1, Hassa in P2, Siggy P3, then got Fiducci in P4. Rachel now comes into the pits. Uh, it's all of the drivers that are indeed, <laughs> who've come into the pits here early, are lapping very, very quickly indeed. Uh, some of them as quick as the leaders right now. So this undercut is absolutely working right now. Kripner, I think, might have a nice little gap to work with on Siggy. Siggy will be bringing this car in, I would imagine, sooner rather than later, as soon as he hears that information. Uh, but again, has he got anyone in the server watching for him? I would imagine he does. And they'll be figuring stuff out here. I can't imagine he's doing this completely on his own. Uh, but right now, he's actually starting to lose time to the front two, isn't he? A little bit more now. He was uh, at 1.4.8 seconds, or actually maybe the timing just going a bit all fuzzled. Yeah, I mean, uh, Moritz Lona is, is at least uh, as far as that last lap is concerned, he was about two tenths of a second faster than Hassa, about one tenth of a second faster than Siggy. So um, it was more of a scruffy lap uh, for Hassa more than it was uh, a fantastic lap for Siggy. But we'll uh, uh, we'll see how this uh, all files out. Um, Siggy might uh, might be looking at you know, but oh, we see Lona's in. Yeah, Lona is it? Ashley. Is it Lona that's coming to the pits it's or is it Hassa? Uh, Hassa, there we go. Everyone's coming in. So Hassa's coming to the pits then. Um, we've also got Fiducci, I think, who's just coming to the pits as well. Just in behind you, the Ford Dilla Ferrari just coming to the pits here. Uh, so those two have decided to come in. Uh, that means that indeed Lona's going to be in the lead. Siggy will indeed take P2. And well, I guess we'll see legitimately now has Krippner managed to catch up here? Fiducci was behind them, was behind Krippner. Um, but how much of a gap has he managed to pull here? Has Krippen been able to catch up in, in uh, any time whatsoever? I know he's a good five seconds behind the leader, so you're well, not expecting him to be up ahead of Lona, but you're expecting him to de definitely close the gap. His, uh, his, well, his fast outlap, so the first lap that actually counts, 
um, it was a, a 32 flat, and that was four tenths of a second faster than Lola's last lap time. So he is oh. going very, very quickly indeed. So this is brilliant here then for uh, Crippling. He's played an absolute genius card here. So with Siggy staying out as long as he has done, um, this is going to make it very, very difficult for him to. Well, it's going to make it very, very difficult here for Siggy to get that podium spot as Florian Hasser comes out. And, well, how quick is Hasser oh. going to be over the next couple of laps? As Kripp, uh, oh, he's on the limit here as he tags <laughs> the wall there. That's going to cost him a little bit of time. Uh, again, Siggy did not come in on the last time round. Lona, I would imagine, reacts here. It, he has to, right? Surely he has to, because Hasser is obviously going to be faster for a good couple of laps, and he could ultimately take the lead of this race. So there's Kripner going through turn number one. A drive-through penalty for Jan Mark and oh, Fiducci. No. Fiducci's got a drive-through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. He came into this championship here third. He was third position. He was third spot there for Team Fordzilla. One point behind second of Ottaviani. And that is going to kill his chances here as Kevin Siggy does come into the pits then. Zalona has stayed out here. Siggy into the pits. We are now going to see has Kripner gained a bit of a gap? Remember, they were almost touching as they came in. They probably were touching, weren't they? As, they, yeah. as Kripner came into the pits, how close will they be? How far will Kripner be up the road? It's a bigger question, I would, I would say. Uh, it's, yeah, the Kripner, Kripner's stop was very well timed. I will say that. And again, he, he took another three tenths of a second at the leader the last time. So uh, fresher tires, certainly uh, the desirable uh, objects at the moment. Siggy down on towards the pit lane, of course, getting his fresher tires for the end of the race. Same with, uh, um, with Otto Viani as well. Uh, there's Morris Lona continuing out there, and uh, Lona doesn't necessarily have to respond right away. He, he had a, a huge gap um, to at least to Siggy, and, and a pretty healthy one back to um, uh, back to Hasser as well. So, it, I mean. Lona, you know, he, he can just take his, he can take a sweet time to come to his decision whether or not to come down in and cover that off or not. Um, it depends how much pressure he's feeling. He might even just try to actually just get to the halfway points for this race 50-50. Yeah, well, I guess so. That probably makes more sense. He had about 2.8 seconds to work with, maybe three seconds to work with. The longer he stays out, I think the more pressure he's going to be under, but he will be quick coming towards the end here. There is Kevin Siggy then, who comes out behind Hassa. And Kripner. oh, Kripner's got Kripner's got him. Oh, no, Kripner's behind Hassa. Sorry, but look how much he's closed up here. So he gained what three seconds? Yeah, I think. And Siggy, well, Siggy's pace just on the old tires was quick enough for him to close that gap. I think he's probably going to catch these two up here if they start battling for position. But all of a sudden, then Kripner is battling for that second spot uh, in this race. Potentially, Kevin Siggy's going to get involved here for that battle as well. And if I'm Moritz Lerner. Surely those two would be speaking to each other, going, we're close on track here. Yeah. It might be worth you actually coming into the pits here and just making sure you're ahead of everybody. Although those two aren't going to be saying this specifically because they wouldn't mind him dropping behind them. I don't know what's going to go on here. Lona has to come into the pit, surely. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, there's only so long you, you can keep it going out there before you're, you're going to be losing boatloads of time to those on fresher tires. What was the last lap time for Lona? It was a 32.5. Uh, Kripner was invalid. Um, Hassa, it was an outlap, so the only reference that we... We actually don't really have a reference in terms of how fast people are going back there uh, because uh, Siggy is on his outlap as well. Uh, so, uh, but either way, you, you know, you knew even before this lap that you were losing, what, three, four tenths of a second a lap back to uh, fresh attire competitors. You can only sustain that for so much even though you, even when you had already a, a two or three second gap to the guards behind you that's going to get gobbled up relatively quickly so maybe even there's a little bit more pressure on Lona here he just continue to stay out just one well at least one more and uh, we'll, we'll see um, we'll see if that's a mistake or not I think he's still fine for now but uh, any well much longer than he's at risk of uh, uh, both Hassa, Kripner and potentially Siggy in the tour both of them uh, threatening him I, th I think I think it's a mistake. I, I, he still will probably come out in the lead here, but I feel like you've got to back your ability to just go, look, do you know what? Let's make sure I've got track position here. Let's make sure that I'm out in front of everybody. And then I just back my ability. I've already won one race today. I can win another one. Yeah. It's not going to be a problem here. Uh, even if I you know, even if I did come in now, it would have been, a, what, two minutes off of a split? So it would be 32 minutes or a plus one lap, let's say. So maybe 34 minutes on one set of tyres. The guys behind you are still going to be on older tyres at that stage of the race anyway. So I think it. I think if you're a loner, you have to come in next time. At the very least here, if you don't, then you're only really, and don't get me wrong, this is good for us watching at home, you're only really putting yourself in a position where you might lose the lead. 
Like, right now, the only way you can guarantee that position is by coming into the pits, getting that fresh rubber on, and then just running to the end. Done. Good, good job, happy birthday, and all that good stuff. But yeah, the longer you stay out right now, with them being half a second faster, it's the only way you can lose the lead here, uh, apart from making a mistake. So, yeah, I would bring it in if I was him. Uh, what, uh, Siggy, how close is Siggy to all of this now? Is he starting to catch up here as we've got a race for the exit of the pit lane? There's Jack Keithley here currently. Uh, he has pit, by the way. He's up into P8. There's Siggy. So, Keithley is battling for fifth, I think, because of the uh, Fiducci penalty. So, Keithley's actually going to get a top five here if he sticks around where he is, which would be a massive result for him in the AMG. And I think the AMG is going to be good at Spa. I think you're going to see uh, that happen. And here it is. So Moritz Lerner finally does decide to come into the pits here, which uh, yeah, I think everybody's coming into the pits now, to be completely honest, as it stands. So now we'll see exactly how far. What was the gap? 2.8 seconds, was it, between him and Hassa? It's something like that. Um, going to be a little bit closer going off the pit lane, I would have thought, um, in this situation. Hassa, he did a 132 flat that last time. Uh, Lona, uh, well, his was uh, he was averaging the the mid uh, 132s. Uh, so again, half a second, well, four tenths, half a second of lap being taken out. Here's Isaac Price. Um, we haven't seen so much of Isaac Price in this series doing his typically long first stints. Um, I I'm glad they've seen a bit of a resurgence here, as uh, he's uh, going to continue on and uh, and get as many laps on that set of tyres as is theoretically possible. But uh, Marcus Lona coming off the pit lane now. He was pretty much splitting the uh, difference 50-50. Look how slow the oh, pit exit is here. Yeah. So here <laughs> we go. So it, just, it will feel so slow. And here we go then. He's got to get himself up to speed. Where is Florian Hassa? Where is Florian Hassa? Oh, he's going around turn one. I think Hassa might have him here. I think Hassa, by the time they get to turn two, it could be really close. Or oh, it's not as close as I thought it was going to be. I got overexcited <laughs> there. But no, Moritz Lerner is going to hold on to the lead here with pressure tires as well. Uh, but ultimately, the gap has come down gap has definitely come down here not by as much as we may have thought uh, Morris Lerner has played an absolute blinder if we're going to be completely honest in this situation front four have kind of separated a little bit here Krippen are not able to hang with a pace here Florian Hasser and it's really now all about Siggy can Siggy close that gap and maybe battle for that podium yeah that's the uh, that's the situation we have uh Krippner trying to maintain inside a second to uh Hasser that will give him uh, at least uh, the, the tail end of the slipstream here, and we'll, we'll keep him a little bit safer from Kevin Siggy behind. Uh, but, you know, trying to maintain that for another 27 minutes uh, is, is a different issue for sure. Uh, we're still yet, uh, well, still yet to see two drivers come on towards the pit lane. That is Isaac Price and uh, Florian Bowden. Uh, both of those guys have not come down in just yet. Isaac Price basically just logging lead laps at the moment. And, well, Bowden, he is on the pit lane now. So that means that Isaac Price will be the last man standing with regards to the pit stops here today. Um, and, well, <laughs> again, like I said, it's pretty typical for Price for, to uh, be pushing these stints out as far as possible. Yeah, he loves it, and he? he loves being, having a, a lap lead under his belt, which, um, yeah, well, he, to be fair, throughout his career, he's used to leading from the front <laughs> right at the beginning. He's that good. He's won <laughs> multiple competitions uh, that way, obviously. Uh, Payich is having a very good second half of his race here, if I'm going to be completely honest. He's uh, right behind Alexander Dorniden. These two are very similar in terms of their style uh, as well. They're right in behind each other, so can Payich potentially make a move here? Down towards turn number two, and you can see there, Payich forces Dorniden to go very, very defensive there with that number 69. Nice BMW. And Payich, again, not quite able to, to close up enough here and make that move, of course. Payich there with his arms crossed there. Serious sim racer, of course. Everybody knows that you gain half a second a lap if you cross your arms in your, in your shot for a picture. And Marco Payich is absolutely delivering that as it stands. But he wants that top 10. Isaac Price, where does he come out in all of this? I think he's battling for around about eighth position. Um, he would have lost a lot of time. Dornigen has been flying since he indeed got that fresh set of rubber on his car. So I think Price may be looking to battle with those two. I think he might be in and around that kind of battle. Um, it re remains to be seen if that is the case here. But Dornigen, after changing those tyres, is absolutely flying. He's off to chase down Ottaviani. Ottaviani, of course, looking to try and get well, or keep into that top five. Uh, but as it stands, yeah, Dornigen doing a very good job indeed. Uh, it, it's not been too shabby, has it? Um, able to maintain this P2 back to pay it to the moment, despite the uh, 
uh, despite the threats. And, well, it's a little bit easier when you consider it is a BMW versus a Mercedes, but uh, even uh, getting rid of that point, Payich, a uh, tough driver uh, to keep uh, behind you. But, uh, again, this... They all are. Yeah, I mean, they all are. I mean... <laughs> that's, what, that's why we're talking I, I, about I it, kind Connery. Of, uh, <laughs> Everything I say is relative, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, um, uh, yes, in any normal session, if you met these guys in a random official ranked race, they're going to be pretty much impossible to try and keep behind you if you're just an average sim racer. Let's just say that. Either, either way, well, Isaac Price, he's down in. There we go. Isaac Price comes in. So I think he's going to come out in a battle for around about P10, Dornigan and Payich, maybe just a bit behind them, in between Payich and Hoogvelt. Uh, but again, remains to be seen exactly where he comes out. While he is in his pit stop here, we have got one more DTM 2021 code to give away on Race Room, ladies and general cars. So if you do indeed race on Race Room and you haven't got the pack yet, this includes all of the cars and all of the liveries as well. Uh, all you need to do is head over to Twitter, use the hashtag WeLoveDTM. So that's all you got to do is use the hashtag we love DTM. Um, is there bonus points for you showing me your favorite car? Absolutely. Uh, you know, just because I like looking at cars. Uh, maybe you want to show me who your favorite driver is. Maybe who your favorite commentator is. Connery is pretty good. Um, but yeah, just use the hashtag we love DTM on Twitter and I'll be picking the final winner at the end of, well, just after this race finishes. 23 minutes, 40 seconds to go. The battle for the podium. We did ask for it. We wished for it. We are absolutely seeing it there. As we see Isaac Price coming out the pits, he's still got about 40 miles. It'll feel like about 40 miles before he can indeed turn that pit limiter off uh, and indeed go up to speed here. So he's going to lose a, a fair few positions. We come down towards turn number two. Uh, again, there's Isaac Price, and he will get going now. Uh, he's dropped behind Dornidon. He's dropped behind Payich. He's going to be in between Payich and Hoogbell. I tell you what, Connery, it's not very often when I get something right, but when I do, I will boast about it. That's exactly where I said. I'm out, and that's exactly where he is. Yeah, I'm pretty much equidistant between the two as well. Um, I'm kind of impressed how, you, how you've been able to get that so right. Uh, Hoekveld, of course, preoccupied a little bit because he's got Axel Vermele in, uh, in his wing mirrors. And a further battle behind, doors out Woo! as well between Nagy and Tinier. And uh, we also got uh, Rudinger uh, as well in the BMW, the third party in on this one bearing down on them. So race starting to come to life now. I did say we'll get a little bit more excitement in the second stint. Oh, I love Arnage Competition's liveries. Yeah. I think the pink is just... Oh, I love a bit of hot pink, ladies and gentlemen. I've got many a thong that are hot pink. That is a beautiful car there. Right there, Rouge on the side. Uh, looking to potentially make some moves here. So this is Rudinger trying to make a move for what will be P15. Have to sweep around the outside if you want to get it stuck here. Uh, it's going to be tough to hold on to this. And the uh, overlap uh, closes as quick as it opened there. Tiladinia and one of the... Oh, it looks young in the picture, but one of the older hats there as well. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back on board with that there as we do see it. Oh, no, let's stick on this. Then. This is for B3. Rudinger was trying to make an opportunity there for himself. He tried to force it. It nearly pulled off, but I think Dinya is just about going to hold on there. But this is about four P3. So we have got Leonard Krippner then currently in the P3 as it stands. And Kevin Siggy's going to go deep under braking. Not sure it's going to quite work out here. It's kind of a, it's, an, it's not really much of a pinch point through there. It's really nice and open on the exit. But if you do run out wide through turn two on the exit of turn two, it tightens up through three and four. Um, but you can use it to your advantage there. Just like Krippner did, he ran the car out nice and wide. I mean, Siggy can't then go and sweep it around the outside because he's going to run deep anyway because he's breaking later. Uh, and, well, Krippner is going to hold on to the position. But I tell you what, he's had a lot of practice of holding on to this position from Siggy. So, yeah, he's bound to he's bound to have a use all that experience or something. Yeah. Um, the on board with Siggy here is interesting because he... Oh, we might have an accident at the back. We do. Uh, Leon Rudinger has had a big, big issue. He was embroiled in that battle with uh, Nagy and Dinya ahead. Something must have happened in and amongst that grouping. Unfortunately, we're unable to do replays here, so uh, we won't be getting another view, uh, or, or even our first view of it. But uh, Rudinger uh, toes back to the pit lane as well, so he's going to be logged as a DNF uh, from this event. And, well, he's certainly not alone. Rodriguez, Viducci, Markovic, Rana, and Pliska are all also DNF. Well, Pliska disqualified technically, as you can see on the left. It didn't look like it was. Um, it was a lot. Of, there was a lot of damage to the car there. So I think that's a silly decision. Like you, twenty P twenty one gets points, right? And he was currently battling for P sixteen or P fifteen. So I just think you've got to stay out there, to be honest. Anyway, battle for P three. Krippner versus Siggy, part seventy seven. 
as we head down towards turn number two. Siggy again, is he going to look for a lunge here? He's not. And actually, uh, Kripner has forced him to not be able to do this. And this is now the opportunity for Siggy. Sweeping it around the outside is a very advantageous position to be in. But you have the outside line going in towards four. Uh, nearly worked out there for Siggy, but look at this. Siggy now trying to force that nose up the inside of that BMW. Not again quite close enough to force the issue as we now head down towards this very, very long sweeping right-handed hairpin. And you can see here, Siggy has made this move before by exactly this, making Kripner run out wide, then forcing out nose up the inside on the exit. He's done it once again. He slipped the rear of the car once again, and Kripner holds firm once again. Does Siggy trying to pull out every single trick in the book. Another defensive line being taken by Kripner. Siggy might be able to find the line up underneath, but unsuccessful this time around. This is a lot of pressure piling onto the back of Kripner as Siggy tries to get himself a good run into this final sector. This is where the Ferrari is so, so strong, especially on the fresher tires that Siggy has compared to Kripner. Look at him, he's all over the back of him and he's got a monster of oh. a run coming out of the final corner. Superb run here around that final corner. He absolutely sized up his opportunity with a with a mere couple of corners to go here. But a BMW with that poke in a straight line. There's no slipstream to work with here for Siggy. But indeed, the BMW is going to be offline. A little bit of contact as they come then through turn number one. And now the BMW has to get a punchy exit here. They have to let off the gas ever so slightly through there, which means the BMW should be able to fight back here. Siggy is going to go defensive really, really early here. Kripner needs to force him onto the apex. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's it's done deal, isn't it? Kevin Siggy has absolutely nailed it. They're both going to be slow on the exit here because Siggy runs out of road. But it, ultimately, he does get the job done. It's taken him half a lap. And actually, to be fair, it took him a full lap, didn't he? Try to set that up through turn number two. And ultimately, that's what set off the domino effect in terms of being offline for Kripner. Siggy asserting his dominance in this championship, makes it back up to P3. And in all fairness, judging by the pace of Lerner and Hasser, this is really the maximum he could have asked for in race one and race two. And he's going to get the maximum here. He will be our championship leader if he doesn't make a mistake from now until the end. This is a championship. This is a champion's drive this uh, week for uh, Siggy. With only three days left to go before the next round of Spa, he is looking absolutely golden. He's in top form. Yeah, and we haven't really talked all that much about the, the short time frame between now and the next round. There's only three days for you to, well, less than that if you if you're talking in terms of hours uh for you to try and prepare for that for the next race of course it is spa franco champs which every sim racer knows like the back of their hands um even i know how to get around there relatively quickly uh which cannot be said for any other circuit um but uh, so i guess that works in their favor given that it's such a popular circuit but you know, such such a, little, a tiny amount of time to try and prepare for those races. Remember, these guys usually have about two weeks to try and prepare for the next event. So we'll have to see how that changes things with, with the limited preparation time. Yeah, 100%. That's going to make things very interesting this Sunday. So again, if you didn't know, for the first time, we're going to be heading to a a couple of rounds on a Sunday. So this Sunday evening, same time as usual, so 6 p.m. BST, as we see a battle here. Alexander Dornigan then with a lot of pressure behind him. And Marco Payne, it's going to be three wide in towards turn number two. Isaac Price would love to sweep around both of them here. Dornigan gets, well, caught there on the bonnet of Payne. They used to be teammates as well at Veloce. And Isaac Price then forces Dornigan onto the curb, which means Dornigan's not going to be able to get the power down. Oh, Isaac Price, roll back for years. It's a double move here then for Price. He moves from 11th to 9th. Connery, that was delicious. That was incredible. That was awesome there. Just perfect positioning for Isaac Price. Perfect line through that chicane. You, you, you have such limited space when you're three wide through there. You don't know what those two cars on the inside are going to do. Oh, Dornadin, big, a big moment up over the curb there. Kicking up a whole bunch of dirt. Now coming under threat from AH into the next corner. But very, very well played there from Isaac Price. Uh, it, it relies a cert on a certain amount of trust on those two cars on the inside not to wash up into your line when they're going three wide. Just, oh, Dornaden just gets completely mugged by Payich there, but he's able to respond and get back past. Yeah, these two, again, no love lost us for sure. They race together at Veloce, but look who they've brought into play now. Hoogveld, who was in the top five position, in fourth position coming into this week, and he's fallen out of the top five now. And even with if he overtakes the three cars in front of him, he will still fall out of that top five. And they got Vermeulen as well. Vermeulen was battling in that top ten. He's currently uh, looking to try and keep hold of that top ten. He's 13th position. Uh, and with Dornigan and Payich absolutely going for it like this, 
there's every reason to suggest there might be a couple of freebie positions going on. We see Payet then underneath that rear wing of the BMW. The BMW punching a huge elephant side hole in the air here for Payet again around the outside. He's taken a leaf out of Isaac Price's book, goes very, very deep under braking, realizes there's no gap to actually go into, had to slam the brakes on. Now under a lot of pressure here from the R8 G driver of the hook that sweep then very close in behind them. We've got Vermeulen, the Belgian in that TX3 green and ch charcoal gray livery. And actually not far behind then is David Nagy as well. There is always a Hungarian. That's how it works in sim racing. There is always a Hungarian and here he is. Uh, Lona still leading the way, 3.1 seconds, stretching his legs out beautifully well here. It is Hasser in second, Siggy in third, Kripner dropping back now in fourth position. Keith Lee, haven't spoken a lot about him today, but two really good performances in the AMG. Rachel, Pfeiffer are your top seven, and Ottaviani, and then it's this Price, who's now actually forced a, a fair few seconds between him already and Dornidon. Dornidon leads this pack with a it's just behind in that AMG, the white AMG there, and the car on board with that is hooked well in that Ferrari with the Malin. So this four-way battle is for a top 10 as Isaac Price has stretched his legs here uh, but ultimately it looks like they've all now got a little bit of a gap between each other uh, Michael Rachel definitely doesn't right now because he's got Pfeiffer right in behind him as they come through turn number one and as they now run down in towards turn number two two AMGs fighting for it uh, together here it's always nice to see but look at the effect of slipstream down towards two not quite close enough to make a move here and it will pretty much be a procession for the remainder of this lap and it's really all about getting out that final corner punching out getting a nice run through one and then trying to make a move around the outside in two yeah that that, that seems to be the strategy that the drivers are taking when it comes to a potential overtake um it, you know sweeping by around the outside of the chicane uh, typically uh, the, the big one of course we saw uh, Siggy try and do sort of a, a force to the inside through the final sector that then he can uh, try and capitalize by taking a by, by nipping underneath and things like that but again limited opportunities here it seems especially if you have a difference in terms of the manufacturers but between the two Mercedes you'd have thought things would be a little bit more fair between those two looking back though Dorna Den, Payich, Hoogveld, Vermeulen uh, involved in this one now Vermeulen well 13th at the moment uh, the third highest placed Ferrari, which I, I guess sounds better than 13th, right? It does sound a lot better than 13th <laughs> there, Connery. I'm not going to lie. I just put a smile on my face. That well, is, well, he's, th <laughs> well, he's does, not third, yeah. but he's fourth now. But yeah. Um, oh, I'm, fuck just... Oh, no, that's, that's rubbish then. That's <laughs> worse than 13th. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I've completely butchered uh, that. I will say I? one thing, though. I, I love how this race has developed in terms of the talent on screen because Siggy, who you know, ultimately is probably the fastest out there, was looking to make the move up the inside of turn two every single time in race one and at the start of race two. But it's developed that people have realized actually go around the outside faster. You'd think these drivers yeah. would know that coming into this, but that's just how races develop, right? You, you have to also, you've got to appreciate that the other driver is a talented driver in front of you and you have to force something that's maybe not as comfortable for them. So yeah, it's really nice to see that that's it coming to fruition. Uh, in the real world of racing, the most overtakes do come from around the outside. I've commentated here a couple of times now, and it is around the outside of turn number two. So um, yeah, it's, it's quite common, but the sim racers kind of figured it out a little bit later uh, as they were all trying to run it up the inside. And you see here, Vermeulen got really close there to Hoogveld uh, and ultimately wasn't able to take full advantage. Now dropped back a little bit further. Uh, and even though Payich and Dornidon are pretty much, if there was, yeah, it's like a metaphor. It's like a sim racing metaphor for a fight, fist fight between the two of them as it stands. Even though they're fighting like they are and door banging, they have gapped these two Ferraris here. So the two Ferraris may be starting to struggle for their tire wear. With 11 minutes to go, Connery, tires now are going to be a huge factor. Yeah, they are. I mean, those early stoppers uh, are really going to be struggling now uh, to the end of this race. I mean, we've seen tire uh, tire affected races already. I mean, just look at Imola with how the uh, um, the tire strategy was was instrumental in terms of how that race uh, ended up. Um, and well, these are very very long stints, very long stints on the tires. Of course, you know it, it is a GT3 racing. It, it, it's kind of just a, a normal stint. You know, it, it's you know an hour stint is not too big of a problem for them. But when you've been driving them pretty much 110 uh, percent ever since they come off the pit lane, then it does tend to take a little bit more uh, out of the tyres than, than you would like and the, the car sits fishtailing around a little bit. Even though GT3s do have traction control, uh, we, we've seen our fair share so far this season of, of cars getting all sorts of out of shape uh, in the traction zones. So keep a lookout for that in the final 10 minutes.
Yeah, for sure. Uh, again, two Ferraris here battling full position, being Hoogveld and Vermeulen. Just in behind this battle here. There we go, almost side by side. And now they've got a third one joining them as well. Uh, again, the Hungarian Naji just in behind uh, Fort Mirror Esports. So we head then the long run down towards that sweeping right hand hairpin, cambered corner as well. So there are a couple of lines you can take here. We've seen, again, Kripna being able to defend the, the a move from being on the outside. We've also seen him lose a position from being on the outside. The inside line is also just as quick uh, as we, again, come through there, down in towards the final complex of corners before we head onto that long straight through turn number one and, indeed, down towards turn number two. Um, a Siggy, I felt like might have been under a little bit of pressure there from Kripna. It was six tenths of a second the gap between the two of them. Yeah, Siggy has just not had the pace to really close in on the front two here. And I'm wondering if Kripna might have a little bit of a late charge here for that potential P2, uh, P3, shall I say, the podium. Make it uh, eSports 1, 2, 3. Red lines driver Siggy ruining that as it stands. On board then with P6, battling with P7. Pfeiffer still very, very close. But Ottaviani, Ottaviani realistically needs these two positions to try and indeed hold on to his top five. Remember, top five in this championship will indeed head to a DTM event this year and be assessed as to whether who is going to be. Oh, it's a very late lunch here by Ottaviani. He's gone for the inside route here. And actually a little bit of help with a touch of contact there is going to hold on to that position that's actually a really nice move and he is taking full advantage here Pfeiffer kind of being caught looking at the rear of Rachel he's been behind Rachel for lap after lap after lap and he probably wasn't even really expecting anything from behind because he was too focused on where he could make a move going forward and ultimately there you go Ottaviani moves up the Italian I think he might have well, he's battling here with Rachel, I think, as well. Yes, he is. So already making his move up towards Rachel. Side by side, he's going to be sent out on the exit here. And it's AMG power versus Ferrari power. The Ferrari will have the inside line for the next corner. It's last of the late breakers here as well. Seems like he's going to be able to break so much later here than the AMGs. And absolutely, in the late stages of this race, picking up very vital points to hold on to that potential top five in the championship. The championship is going to have changed. That's for sure. The look of it by the end of this race. But has Ottaviani done enough here to potentially keep himself in there? He was in the top three of the championship, but you can see he has absolutely got no traction on exit. Seems to be able to get the car stopped, but getting the power down seems a bit of a struggle. But I think everybody's in the same boat as it stands. Uh, it's still Lerner that leads here. It's still Hasser in second, still Siggy in third, Kripner in fourth, Keithley just on his own, just doing his thing. P5, a, a really good performance from him. And again, a couple more of these kind of performances, you do start to ask the question of, yeah, he can absolutely get into that top five. He's someone that if you get to the final two races and you give him a chance, he's got all the experience in the world. If you've got a couple of drivers that are maybe not as experienced about getting across the line, getting into those winning positions in championships, the last person you want clipping at your heels is Jack Keithley. So you will absolutely be in and amongst it. Christopher Hook felt that we've had three race winners so far this season. Lawrence Lerner's got himself two. Kevin Siggy's got himself two. And Christopher Hookvelt has got himself one. Currently down to P13 as it stands. Battling here with Naji. He has absolutely got nothing left here, has he? He is really struggling. The Hungarian looking to get back up into sort of P13 range. The other three cars who are ahead of this battle are just pulling away. And Hookvelt is just a bit of a shadow of his, his former self, although he, he got a win uh, this week in the Adak GT Masters again, didn't he? He was performing exceptionally well in that and just not quite got the pace today with DTM. He's yeah, it's 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 been a bit of a weird one, Hoogveld, in, in recent times because his performance has dropped off a little bit in the in the Adak series and also um, not as as great of a showing here in the DTM as it was before. So maybe it was just the first couple of months of, of 2022 where Hoogveld was, uh, uh, was really getting into the groove. But now, uh, as we're... Well, we're in April now. Um, it, things have fallen off a little bit for him. I don't know whether that's him falling off and, and him coming towards the end of a good run or it's everyone else uh, stepping up their level. Um, that's one of those things that's very, very hard to tell. Uh, but for Hoogveld, he's hoping that it, it wasn't a temporary thing and he can actually return back to that early year form where he was, was absolutely incredible, um, getting things stuck in at, at the very front of the field. Um, but for, for right now, P13, <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of more 2021 Hergfeld than 2022. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. But again, he's still showing flashes of brilliance. To have a win with this unbelievable grid is exceptional in itself. So, yeah, I'm absolutely not saying that he's done and dusted this year for sure. But 
Again, today he's just been a bit of a drop-off in performance considering what we were seeing from him last time out a couple of weeks ago at the Norris ring. Uh, and just really, he was trying he was trying his level best now to hold on to P13. As we see, Alessandro Ottaviani, nice bit of a gap to work with here. Could he potentially catch up to Jack Keithley? Is Keithley going to lose enough time? It's like four seconds in what will be around about four laps, I think. Maybe even five laps, actually, by the time they cross. No, it will be four laps, I think. Um, it's going to be very, very difficult for Ottaviani to grab any extra positions, I would say. I think it's pretty set, our final positions, unless there's a mistake we saw uh, actually last week from our championship leader, Siggy, who is arguably one of the best sim racers in the world at anything he touches. He was capable of making a mistake in race one last week, cost himself a race victory, uh, which actually handed it to Hoogveld, didn't it? So, yeah, we may still see a mistake from these drivers, but as it stands, it's still Lerner, Hasser, Siggy, uh, Krippner, and Keithley as your top five, and Ottaviani here. I think this is a really good performance considering they're qualifying down in P12. Was Ottaviani P12? Could have been P10. It was a double figure number to gain those positions. You know, you're under pressure to keep hold of that top five. I think that's a very, very good, good performance. And I think if he does manage to get a top five, he'll be looking at this week thinking, yeah, do you know what? Damage limitation. I did well that week to really push myself towards that top five and those prizes. Yeah. It, again, it, it's, it's, it's always a tough one. Uh, it, there's damage limitation. There's now an element of damage limitation coming into the day, I think, for uh, Alessandro Ottaviani, especially with that poor Q2 performance. It's, well, he was given a task. He's done the task pretty well, like you said, up into P6. Um, so, again, I don't think you can get any more than that. That's three and a half seconds back to you know, further forward to Keithley at the moment. So it looks like, uh, if anything, he's probably going to remain there as long as Rachel and Pfeiffer um, stay about three tenths of a second behind. We still got this close battle though between Hoogfeld and uh, Naji, which has been raging on for a little while now. Uh, Hoogfeld, of course, he's on his own sort of damage limitation strategy for this race, as he hasn't been on the ball whatsoever. And, you know, another place lost to Naji potentially um, would just be another nail in the coffin with regards to the, the points order. I think coming into this, he was fourth place, 101 points, not all that far behind yep. Ottaviani Fiducci. Yeah, this is kind of a race for the to forget for him. Yeah, coming into this week, Kevin Siggy led with a 53-point advantage over Ottaviani. Fiducci was in third position. Fiducci's a DNF here. It's going to be zero points for this race. And the first race, I can't remember where he finished, actually, in the first race. Um, Moritz Lerner was fifth in the championship. He was behind Hoogveld, who was fourth. But Morris Lerner is going to, by the looks of things, get a double win here today, which is huge. It's going to close the gap, but uh, not to um, Siggy, but he's, I think he will take P2 in the championship after today. Actually, it'd be quite easy as well as Vermeulen here making a move potentially on Dorniden. Dorniden, wow, uh, not leaving enough room. That, I think if that's looked at, that will be an absolute slam dunk penalty for Dorniden. He did not leave him any room, and now Payet is doing exactly the same. Poor Vermeulen here is being used like a like a beach ball here. That's not fair at all. So I think Dorniden, I know these drivers are on the limit of their tires, but I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's a, a little bit naughty from both of those drivers. I think Payage less so, because I don't think he was, there's much choice he could, had in the matter. Um, but yeah, yeah. Vermeulen's going to have every reason to be a little bit annoyed with that. Um, but yeah, Siggy came in with a 53 point advantage over Ottaviani and Fiducci. Fiducci was one point behind Ottaviani. So with Fiducci not having a, a, a race finish uh, in this race, it's going to kill his chances of a top five, really. Hoogveld was P4. He's not had a good day today. Uh, the big surprise is really is Florian Hasso, who's currently sixth position. He's going to get a double second today. So I think he's actually going to move up to third in the championship. And Morris Lerner, I think he's going to take second spot. They will close the gap to Siggy ever so slightly. I still think it's going to be a good 50, 55 point advantage for Siggy going into the second half of this season. So Siggy's in a great spot, uh, but Lerner and Hasser have just genuinely put themselves in a good spot. I think Krippner's going to move up into a top five as well. So I think Krippner might be fifth position. I think it's going to be Fiducci and Hoogveld are going to drop out. Again, we will get the uh, points for you at the end of this broadcast. I would like to think. Uh, but yeah, looking very, very interesting indeed. As Axel Vermeulen then is going to try and retake the position down towards turn number two. The outside line is the favoured line. Of oh course, no! But he's actually... Oh, that's... Oh dear. Oh dear. That's when you try to look really clever and try and do a fake move and you absolutely bottle it and you just chuck someone off the circuit. That was that was interesting there. You can see what he was trying to do. He was trying to be clever. He was trying to be driver of the year, uh, and ultimately he's ended up being zero of the year. That was not That was embarrassing, I will say. Page is continuing out there. Um, it, it, 
trying to keep things going. Vimele, and you know, he'd still be 13, but uh, albeit uh, a very damaged Ferrari as well. That that is not how you would want wanted that to end. Not what and, and either either of the drivers would have wanted it to end. Not how we would have wanted it to end either. We were looking at a pretty good battle there, um, but um, yeah, that is just very very unfortunate. Big big incident as well. Huge impact with the barrier. I mean that would have been pretty much the end of the race um, if that happened in the real world and we had red flags and things like that. Uh, but we do not. With uh, and uh, we've got 30 seconds to go at the moment. There's Moritz Lona. He's been well really alone at the end at the front of this field at least for the vast majority of the second half of this event. He's got a six-second advantage back to Florian Hassa, and this is the final lap. I saw Tim Heinemann get absolutely cleaned out of that corner in real life. And you know what? I forgot that I was a real-life commentator at that point. So I, Because I, I, I've been doing sim racing for so long, I just assumed it's sim racing. So instantly I'm like, oh my god, that's unbelievable. And then I was like, hold on. They, they're real drivers. They might not be okay. Yeah. So instantly I was like, oh, no, what's going on here? Like the Aston Martin, it was a KTM that wiped them out by missing his breaking point. I think it was a brake failure in the end. Um, and it, he, Tim Heinemann got hit so hard in the Aston Martin, it ripped his driver door off. I, oh, no, Hoek yeah, It was the... Hoek felt oh, spins no. under pressure from David Nagy, and he's going to lose a bunch more positions and more crucial points as Lona rounds the final corner. Yeah, bad day for Hookvelt. A really good day, though, for Moritz Lerner. He is our DTM Esports current champion. He's the reigning champion. And he had a bad week last time out at the Norris ring. But today it's a double win for Moritz Lerner. He's got the number one on his car. He is number one today here at the Lausitz ring. Incredible performance. Florian Hasser as well. A double P2 for him. And Kevin Siggy, it's a double P3 for him. Kripner will pick up P4 here as well. Uh, Jack Heathley not being in our screens all that often today, but he is the lead driver outside of the BMW. Ferrari manufacturers and they have been the two fastest today for sure he will pick up a P5 Ottaviani this is a damage limitation week and he absolutely has limited the damage today with that P6 break from him his qualifying wasn't great Rashall then is going to be in P7 Pfeiffer is going to be in P8 we've then got Isaac Price in P9 with move of the day a double overtake down in towards turn number two uh, Alexander Dornyden then will finish in P10 in at number 69, nice. Naji then is in 11th position for Malin in 12th. We've then got Hoogveld and Dinya in 13th and 14th. Mosin Payich, uh, we have got uh, in 17th position. Well, we're about to find out here. Here's your official <laughs> results then. So Moritz Lerner does take P1. Florian Hasser does indeed take P2. Kevin Siggy does indeed take P2. P3, so congratulations to those three. That is your podium. Kripnak, Keithley, Ottaviani, Rachel, Pfeiffer, Isaac Price, and Alexander Dornington are your top 10. We've then got David Naji, Vermeilen, Hugvelt, Dinya, Mosin, Payich, Fox, Peringa. We've then got Bodin and Whitvert as your top 20. Uh, a lot of DNFs here. Rudinger, uh, Rodriguez, Fiducci, Markovic, and Wanner are DNFs. And then we have Pliska, who was DQ'd before. We even got going wow okay what a race connery the front three again moritz lerner uh, it was indeed hassa and siggy those three were the stars of the field today they didn't look like they were being beaten kripner gave it his uh, his absolute best he tried a different alternate strategy to everyone else it nearly worked out but mm. siggy proving that the ferrari probably didn't quite have the pace today in terms of the bmws but still able to get two huge results and moritz lerner well he's back on top yeah, um, uh, the the resurgence of uh, Morris Lona, shall we say, um, definitely back to where we know he's capable of being at the very, very front of these races. Um, it was a relaxed day, I think, for Lona. Uh, the only real drama that he had was perhaps things getting a little bit closer than we thought in the pit stops. But then again, he had the fresher tires for the end. He was able to pull away. So it, it ended up just not being a problem. And when you when you have a day where your your worst drama is oh they got within a with almost within a second uh, I think you've had a pretty good one. Yeah, absolutely. Could not agree with you more there. Uh, we are going to have the official standings for you um, very, very shortly. Remember, if you want to win yourself a DTM 2021 uh, race room pack, courtesy of Race Room. Again, thank you to those for uh, well, giving us some codes to give away today. Uh, head to Twitter. Hashtag we love DTM. Just do hashtag we love DTM. Maybe tell me who your favorite driver is of all time, and I will pick a winner after this little commercial break.
Auto Hero ist dein Onlineshop für Gebrauchtwagen. Wir verkaufen nur Autos aus unserem eigenen Bestand. Jedes ist von unseren Kfz-Experten general überholt und rundum aufbereitet. Und du erhältst ein Jahr Garantie. So unbeschwert kann Autokauf sein. Finde jetzt dein Auto bei Auto Hero. Welcome back then, ladies and gentle cars. Here is the Canada for the rest of the season. We are just about to show you what the results are for today, or the championship standing, should I say. Uh, we've already done Imola. We've done the Norris ring. Today, we've done the Lausitz ring. We've only got a three-day turnaround, and we head to Spa, Frank or Champ on Sunday evening. So make sure that you're around 6 p.m. on Sunday evening, BST. And if you're in Europe, it is 7 p.m. If you're in America, it's at some point in the afternoon. Um, yeah, great times. <laughs> it should be good. Uh, so yeah, make sure you use the hashtag we love DTM all on the social media. Uh, winner of our giveaway, the final giveaway, will be Wooter, Girl Pino. So if you could send me a uh, DM on Twitter, at Actrollvision, I will get that sent to you. They sent me a picture of a DTM race starting. Uh, and the picture isn't quite close enough for me to see exactly where it is. Um, but yeah, they sent me a nice picture there. So using the hashtag, we love DTM. Thank you so much for to Race Room for giving away some codes during this as well. Anyway, you guys are sick of, to death of hearing me. Um, now it's time to see exactly how the championship looks after six races this season. We're at the midway point. Fastest lap award goes to Moritz Lerner with a 131.599. That is super, super quick. But look at this then. Kevin Siggy leads the way with 220 points. But the gap is now only 45 points to Moritz Lerner. Florian Hassan moves up to third position on 155. Alessandro Ottaviani is on 149. And Gianmarco Fiducci holds on to that top five with 130. Leonard Krippner has announced himself in this championship today with a couple of massive results, has moved himself up into P6 here. Hoogveld drops out of that top five. Jack Keithley 
a couple of results away from maybe pushing towards that top five. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not used to being in the top of a championship and you're not used to getting across that finish line, having someone like Jack Keithley ready and waiting to take advantage of your mistakes, he is the driver you do not want to be there. That's for sure. Isaac Price, he is in P9, very similarly to Jack Keithley. They are twins, of course. And then we've got Adam Pinches. There's always a Hungarian. So that is your standings. We are back on Sunday night for the next one for the DTM Esports 2022. I've been Luke Crane. Connery, I hope you've had as much fun as I have. You've been superb to work with. And, well, we are going to see you all on Sunday, aren't we?